Welcome everyone. So glad to be with you. My name is Rob Koenig. I am one of the co-owners at the Holistic Center for Soulful Living. We're actually here at the Holistic Center for Soulful Living right now in this moment. And I am thrilled to welcome you and to welcome Laurelyn Jackson. Uh, as most of you probably know, we're talking about a renowned psychic medium, best-selling New York Times best-selling author of The Light Between Us and Signs. Uh, Laura is changing lives with her message, and, uh, and we at the Holistic Center for Soulful Living share that mission, the mission of raising the vibration of this planet and really providing a pathway to achieve new levels of balance and harmony in our lives. And this is a fundraising event, and I cannot go any further without paying tribute to all of you for tuning in and for your contributions. Uh, you are allowing us to continue with our mission, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But right now, I just want to welcome Laura. Hello. Thank you, and I want to welcome all of you. I am so excited because I can feel all of your energy. And I want to be thank you so much for being part of today. Today is such a beautiful moment of connection, you know, that I feel with all of you, and I love being here at the center. The center is such a beautiful, light-filled space doing such positive, beautiful things in our world. And I want to thank you for becoming part of this community. You know, there's two definitions of community. One is, you know, a group of people living in near proximity to one another. But it's the second definition of community that I think is the more meaningful of the two. And it's really people who come together in fellowship with energy of a common goal or a common idea. And that's really what we're doing here today. You know, what I always love doing whenever I open my energy to any workshop or any speaking engagement I'm doing or any discussion is I love hearing where people are from. So I'd love if right now in the comments you could let us know where you're from. Um, I know before we went live, I was already hearing um, Paris and uh, Belgium yeah, nice. and New York. Yay, New York's in the house and Tennessee. And Rob has access to the comments while we're here. Yeah, so. I'm looking. We yeah. have Virginia, uh, Robin from Roswell, Georgia, uh, Kristen from Kansas City. Uh, Matthew from Paris, as we mentioned, Amy, uh, where are you from, Amy? Amy from, uh, from Charleston, South Carolina, and it looks like we also have Boston in the house. Liz, welcome. Thanks for being with us. Um, boy, oh boy, we have, uh, oh gosh, Gina from Buffalo, uh, and really all over this country, all over this world. Thank you all for tuning in. Atlanta, San Francisco, Brooklyn, Miami. Oh my gosh, Puerto Rico. This. And we're all connected right now. That's <laughs> a beautiful thing. We might physically be distanced, and that is definitely a topic of discussion for today is the physical distance. But there's an energy between us all right now. And I, I absolutely believe in collective energy and coming together and being linked. If you've read either of my books, you know I, I feel we're all linked by these cords of light and connection. And what I want to thank each one of you for today, too, is you know we get invitations from the universe all the time you know maybe you see something in your inbox or you see something online or you get my newsletter and you know it's announced that hey we're going to be doing this great fundraiser for this really great cause and then you get to decide do I want to accept that invitation or not but every single person who's here today and part of this beautiful community right now said yes so thank you it's such a beautiful gift you've given of your time of yourself of supporting the center and I just want to thank you so very much I'm so excited to get into a discussion uh, with all of you we're going to be doing a, a great portion of Q&A uh, towards the end and well not towards the end for pretty much half of it and we're going to start with uh, a discussion uh, so Rob yeah. and I should probably tell you how we know each other. Yeah, this is, uh, this is actually very fun. Um, Laura and I went to high school together. And uh, so that was, uh, even though we weren't really friends in high school, we didn't, we didn't we run in the apart. same circles. We weren't quite in the same place. A great yeah. apart. And, uh, and as, uh, as, as we would find out as recently as yesterday, we also went to college together. And we literally just discovered this uh, yesterday, I believe yeah. it was. And uh, so, you know, what's so amazing is that uh, apparently we have been running in these parallel circles, this kind of shared energy, and it wasn't until I think you and I really stepped fully into our path, our mission, yeah, our purpose. purpose that we were able to come together and meet and collaborate in this way. And, and Laura, of course, has been uh, grace, gracing us with some live events prior to this 
whole time frame that we're in. Laura has uh, done some beautiful events here at the center. Um, but it's kind of amazing that we've had this connection for so long on an energetic level and now in a, in a real, you know, physical level. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I think that happens a lot to many of us in our lives. There are people who are placed on your path or who are in the peripheral or who are maybe in your soul group or part of your team of light that are set up and waiting to um, step forward or for you to, to find the path. And I think it's really important to note that because of both of our paths and what led us to do our work in the world, we reconnected too. You know, it's, it's really quite awesome when the universe does that. It is. And, you know, when you talk about Team of Light, um, you know, I, I resonated so much with that message in your book when, when, you, when, you, when you reminded us that we do have a Team of Light on the other side. Uh, and now you're bringing up another really important point is that is the team of light that's around us here in this in this time space playground yeah. and uh, and I don't want to go any further without recognizing some very important people in my team of light our team of light actually now uh, and those are my partners um, I, I am so thrilled and honored to share um, this journey with Rosemary Marcaccio and Alyssa Schwartz. They might not be on camera right now, but they are at the chat. They're actually just a, a little bit of the hallway down the, down the way here. Um, so you can definitely say hi to them. They're, they're here with us and they're paying attention to everything that you're sharing. But, um, but I can tell you that when we created the Holistic Center for Soulful Living, Rosemary, Alyssa, and I, we came together again because of a shared mission and a shared, you know, I'm all about vibrational alignment and about how energy and frequency kind of brings like-minded, like-determined uh, like uh, individuals together to, uh, to really create from a much greater perspective. And, and Rosemary and Alyssa and I, um, we, we knew that we had a shared mission uh, to really bring more light to this planet, to bring more opportunities for well-being and balance. And, and that was the mission of the Holistic Center for Soulful Living, was really to create, uh, we call it our spa for the soul. I mean, it's, it's a space where we can come and, uh, and whether it's uh, looking for, uh, for balance through holistic psychotherapy or acupuncture or reconnective healing, which we might get to, um, or um, uh, meditation or yoga, um, there are so many different pathways that we have brought under our roof to give people options so they know that there are many ways to find balance in your life, holistic ways that honor who we really are. And, uh, and we've also been privileged to have amazing speakers and workshops and presentations all throughout our time. And, uh, and that's how Laura began her relationship with us and, uh, and so many other gifted um, presenters over the last several years. And so it is our commitment to continue to bring that to the world. And, uh, and I want you all to know that what you've done by showing up and by registering to be a part of this event, you are part of our mission now. You have allowed us to continue um, in a very, very significant way. And uh, again, my gratitude is, is with you all. Um, and then while I'm on my rampage of gratitude and appreciation, <laughs> I do want to also mention some of the other folks that are behind the scenes that without their assistance, this is not happening today. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Helen Feng. Uh, Helen is behind the scenes uh, making sure that the registrations are going seamlessly, that everyone is getting on to this, uh, this gathering, uh, has helped us with the website integration, everything that we've done to make sure that you know that this is happening. So Helen, we are uh, deeply in debt to you for all of your guidance and leadership. And then Michael Zinn, just outside of the camera, just off camera. is uh, is he's is the magic maker. He's the magic maker that's allowing this uh, this all to to come to you through your screen. Uh, so Michael is extraordinary at what he does in his videography and his uh, knowledge of of sound and sight and image. And he's a very spiritual guide uh, <laughs> on top of it all. And uh, we're so grateful uh, for Michael's assistance as well. So I, I just had to make sure that I, I, yeah. I did a shout out to these really and important it, players. It's so beautiful because everybody volunteered his or her time to come together for this great. And the center is really about energy. You know, I wish every physical community could have a center like this because it's so important for us to connect. But what I'm learning and what the other side is showing me is that we can still connect through the center even if we're not physically here. You know, I think my very first, the way that I found this center is I filled in last minute That's for right. a fundraiser. That's right. Um, 
there was a psychic medium who got ill at the last minute, and she called me and said, can you fill in? I said, wait a minute, Rob Cohen. How's that for a substitute that, teacher, that everyone? That name <laughs> sounds familiar. <laughs> and, um, and that's how I found this. And this center is actually seven minutes from my, my physical Amazing. home now. So it's, it's incredible. I, I love being here, and I love um, that we've all come together for today. Um, I know that we're going to talk about some really um, beautiful topics about energy and how to navigate the world right now. Um, you know, we're, we're a world in crisis right now, and um, what does this mean? Why is this happening? These are really important and valid questions that I'm excited to discuss with everyone today and share downloads that I've gotten about it and so forth. But, um, you know, I think what I love is being in discussion with you, Rob, and seeing like where this leads us. So is there a topic you wanted to start with at all? Yeah, you know what? I There are so many uh, topics that um, that I'm hoping we can get to yeah. today because we want to really dive deep. Um, you know, we're all... We've always been in in it together. Um, right. This is not a new this is not a new concept for where we are, but but I think we're feeling the need more than ever to kind of find our balance in it all, mm -hmm. because I think for uh, for many of us this pandemic experience um, has really kind of uh, really shifted things for us in very unexpected ways, um, and. Uh, you know, and I, I did want to mention one other aspect of who we are as a center, speaking of kind of shifting where we've been and where we need to be, and that is, uh, uh, you know, by allowing our center to continue, uh, we're also reaching another population, and that is our, our Soulful Living for Recovery program. I'm so glad you brought that up. I really <laughs> wanted to talk about it, because that's the actual fundraiser that I first participated in, and I was like, this yes. is so beautiful. So can you talk a little bit about that program? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, uh, we... For many of us, the concept of addiction um, is familiar on maybe, uh, it, for some of us, it's, it, there's a limited picture of what that means when you say addiction. You might think of addiction to substance, but the truth of the matter is addictive uh, experiences can range so, so widely. Um, and it's, and what, we, what we know is that those who are coming through the struggle with addiction they often have a limited number of options, 12-step right. programs and other uh, options that um, traditionally uh, give them maybe limited mileage on how far they can go in their recovery. And, uh, and for many who are, perhaps are seeking alternative ways, uh, bringing spirituality and mindfulness and yoga and meditation and energy healing, uh, those are not options for uh, for many people, especially not covered by insurance. Right. Uh, and uh, and so what we did is we created. I, sh I say we, but it was really Rosemary and Alyssa um, that brought their love and energy for uh, you know for for working with those struggling with addiction and created a not for profit branch of our center that uh, that provides all of the comprehensive holistic services that we provide here for those who are looking to maintain a long term road of of healthy lifestyle and uh, and success but also through our fundraising efforts on the on the uh, not for profit side we are raising money to offer grants for those who normally wouldn't be able to afford alternative holistic pathways to uh, recovering from addiction and this is setting up lifestyle changes so oh, yeah. to kind of bring a, a new level of balance and uh, so so I wanted to mention that also with your uh, your being here and your contributing to uh, who we are I wanted you to know that you're also impacting uh, the lives of, of so many people that we have already touched and many more um, that we plan on uh, on reaching uh, in the years ahead and and let's face it where we are right now what we're going through I think we're going to be needed more than ever. I agree with um, that. And I say we, I mean you, me, and all of, all of those of us who have decided to really, you know, walk the path of offering opportunities for healing. And, and being part of that community, which is really everybody who is watching right now as well. Yes. You know, I say that's being part of like the light worker community. Um, and that's such a beautiful thing because we are all interconnected. I mean, if, any, if there's anything that this global pandemic is showing us, it is how intertwined and interconnected all of our lives are, every single one of us. You know, I think before this happened, it was maybe easy to think we all lived, uh, you know, in a certain snow globe of the family we lived in or the area we lived in or this or that, and that a disease, you know, half a world away for some of us wouldn't ever reach us, you know, something of that nature. But I think we're beginning to see just how intertwined we are. And I, I think the beautiful part of that, the lesson there, part of what it's offering us 
is to give gratitude and appreciate the things maybe we didn't see before. For example, like the essential workers. Uh, these people are risking their lives daily to help humanity, whether it's you know somebody in a hospital setting or somebody who's delivering groceries or working in a grocery store. Like We are all interconnected, and without those people, where would we be? It's just this beautiful web of life. I'm really curious to hear your perspective on the role of gratitude and appreciation in our ability to connect to our higher self or maybe even the, the our, you know, our our light family on the other side. I mean, how does gratitude and appreciation really play a role in, in our ability to really expand and evolve? Yeah, I think that's such an important question to think about and explore. You know, what I've learned every time I do a reading or any time I get my downloads from the other side, I'm always a student and I'm always learning. And I was told like the very highest um, ways we can feel here energetically are love and gratitude and forgiveness. And so when we embrace our lives um, coming from a place of gratitude, we become so much richer in a sense of feeling that energy, um, feeling that connection, coming from such a loving place. It can really transform how you're living. You know, there have actually been studies done, and, and it's fascinating because I'm so interested in the science of everything always, you know. I'm, I'm actually a really skeptical person, which, you know, if you've read about my journey, it was hard for me to come to terms with it, and I work a lot with scientists, and I'm always trying to figure out the how and the why. And one of the things that the scientists um, have found that they did a study of people who identified themselves and were, you know, identified by others as either optimists or pessimists. And they had um, the pessimists, uh, do, do a gratitude list, a very short gratitude list of let's say maybe three things that they were grateful for each day. Um, and they had them do this for 21 days because there's actually a little bit of a secret formula the scientists have found that when you do an activity for 21 days in a row, it becomes a habit. So then you automatically default to that sort of activity. So they took pessimists who are inclined to look at maybe the glass is half full and you know the negative that's there around us at certain times and they had them do gratitude lists for 21 days mm -hmm. and by the end of the 21 day period they had transformed into optimists which is fascinating in a way we reprogrammed our thoughts and our energy you know mm -hmm. I, I always think that energy is a little bit of, of a triangle we are these spiritual light beings we are these souls right stuffed in these physical bodies it's never comfortable it's always like a little bit of like a sausage. And then we have our free will, our choices, the choices we make, how we allow our thought patterns to go. And it's always a configuration of that. So I think when we do certain things, and we'll talk about some of those activities today too, what you can do to kind of clear yourself and align yourself. But I think when we make conscious, thoughtful, mindful, that word mindful choices, mm -hmm. about how we are going to carry our energy, what we are going to choose to see and highlight in our, in our existence, in our world, we can shift and transform our own lives, but in doing so, we will always affect other people's lives in a positive mm. way, too. You know, I love the title for today. A Soul's Guide to These Turbulent Times. That's, that's the essence. Because I think that's really what we need to focus on. If we mm. forget that we're spiritual beings having a physical existence, none of this will make sense. If we remember that we're spiritual beings having a physical existence, everything will make mm. sense in here. Here's how. Like, my guides have told me life comes down to this. It's so simple. Our whole purpose is to be here and be loving and receive love. It's as simple as that. So, you know, one of the things that I wanted to ask you today, and I think it's probably on a lot of people's minds, is that, you know, in this this period that we're in right now, where when you look at what's going on in the world, um, there is such variety, such diversity in experience. I mean, some people are really suffering and really struggling, and it's legitimate. And some people are finding this as an opportunity to kind of expand, and, and there's new opportunities that are being presented. But what, what do you tell someone who is on the side of experiencing great turmoil, great struggle, and they're trying to be more grateful and they're trying to kind of find um, the kind of uh, the, their opening for spiritual elevation because people keep talking about this as a time of transformation but but some people are really hurting and really struggling and how do we guide and, and what guidance have you received to communicate to people who are really struggling during this time right how do we navigate this how do we navigate period? it and you know 
so many of us are empaths, and so when we open energetically, we can feel the pain and the suffering that's going on. And it's not just in our immediate community, it's in our much greater community, it's in our soul community, it's in the global community. So how do we make it through? Well, the answer is we make it through together. The number one thing to remember is that no one is ever alone. I know we might feel alone, and if you get into your physical body and you're not allowed to hug people in your, in your apartment for months on your own and you're frightened to go outside, you can feel really isolated and alone, and that's a very real thing. But it's so important to remember, and this is what my guides have shown me and helped me with, that we are all connected to one another in the here and now, and we are all connected to what I have come to call the team of light on the other side which is understanding that the essence of who we are as a spiritual being is connected to that God source. You know, you can call God the universe, that source of light and love and connection through all, all people, all living things, you know, and the currency there is love. That's how we're connected. But you're also not alone in the sense that, and this is, this is gonna sound a little woo-woo, and I, I'm really not woo-woo, even though I'm a psychic medium in the world, but what I've come <laughs> to understand is that each one of us has as part of our team of light on the other side, teacher and mentor, spiritual guides who help us and have been there from the moment our soul entered this physical body on earth. You know, I call them spirit guides. Throughout time and history, they've been referred to as guardian angels or things of that nature, but it's really spiritual beings who help us and guide us. And some of us are aware of them. We have a sense of a presence or we have a sense of being nudged towards something or told to avoid something. Sometimes we can feel them around. Other people are very wide open to their guides and some of them have like, you know, they know their names and what they look like and that's fine too. I, I always feel like it's the least complicated relationship any of us will ever have when we're here <laughs> because our guides are just there to help us. Our spirit guides are just there to help us and if we don't listen, they don't get mad at us. They just circle back. They try again. They help to navigate us on our highest path. Mm. So I think in this time of isolation, in this time of suffering, remembering that we're part of something much greater than it seems mm. is a really powerful thing. You know, we're connected to one another. And then we're also connected to anybody we ever loved or anything we ever loved, like mm. an animal um, who's crossed to the other side. And here's the beautiful thing. While our team of light, you know, God energy, the universe, um, our spirit guides are guiding us and leading us, we can also call upon and connect with anybody we love who's crossed to the other side, and they can help guide us as well. You know, and I feel like it's not just a theory. I'm saying it's, it's a real thing you can apply in your world and in your life on a daily basis and receive you know, these signs, these messages, this knowing. Because when we have those moments of connection, which are spiritual, it's a knowing within us, and we know we're not alone. And we know that somehow this great, you know, mystery that life seems to be, is somehow it makes sense. You know, I listened to you talk about, you, you mentioned two, co two topics and two concepts. One is that we're in a time on the surface that, that is a time of separation. We've been told to physically separate. We've been told to social distance. And for many of us around the world, we, we've had to adjust to a new lifestyle of being apart. Mm -hmm. But then you're also talking about that we are um, all connected and we're always connected, whether it's to each other or to that sense of our, you know, our, our team of light. Is it possible, and I know you talk about the idea of lessons learned and, and the idea of Earth being a school, is it possible that this experience, this kind of forced physical separation, is this an opportunity for us to really bring to our awareness the true understanding of our connections? We're, we're forced to find those connections because we can't rely on what appears to be our, you know, we're getting together in groups and we're, we're used to our typical lifestyle of being physically together. Now that we're apart, to me, it almost seems like this is our opportunity perhaps to really, really deeply learn that lesson that we're connected. And can you comment on that and then maybe expand into the whole concept of an earth school? Sure, yeah. Well, the first thing I want to say is what you're really talking about is the fact that we're all energetically connected. So even though we might not physically be together, we can still energetically feel one another and feel that connection. You know, some of you might have had this happen where you think of somebody out of the blue and then your cell phone rings and it's that person calling you because there is this connection that goes back and forth between all of us and you know I have some books I'm going to recommend in, in a few moments um, that will help you explore this concept and maybe recognize that going on in your own life as well but one thing that I have learned is that 
earth is absolutely a soul, a, a school. And it's a school for our souls to be learning a collective lesson in love. So the real problem becomes if you carve out your own little life and you try to look at your own life in terms of what is happening to just me right now and is this a success, success or failure? Or am I suffering? Am I thriving? What is going on for me? But you fail to see your role in the context of so many other lives because the truth is we all affect and influence each other more than we can ever fathom. It's just this magical kind of chords of connection that plays out. You know, and that idea is, is there too that, you know, if you start looking into quantum physics, there's some really fascinating information. Sometimes it's a little dry reading, but sometimes it can be just so mind boggling where we start talking about, you know, the truth of our existence isn't just about this physicality, you know, and, and honestly, you and I are not, you know, solid beings. This chair is not solid. We're just really fast vibrating atoms appearing solid following some scientific laws that make us look solid, but we're not. And so when you strip it down to a quantum level, you start learning about like the zero point field and how we're all connected through energy and vibration and that there is constant communication. Um, you know, that our language between us is really a light energy language. Like scientists have proven this. We all glow in the dark. We give up biophotons. So when my guides have been teaching me and telling me that we're all connected through cords of light, and when they tell me when we leave our physical bodies, we turn back into light energy, science is backing that, saying, sure yeah, is. we have biophotons. We're giving off biophotons. You know, the fact that what happens in that moment of transitioning out of your physical body, there's a weight difference, too. It's really, you know, it's that question of how much does the soul weigh. But um, Earth is definitely a, a school. Um, you know, I was raised Lutheran, so I wasn't raised with an idea of a concept really of reincarnation, although it, you know, it, it, is, it is there, right around the Bible with John the Baptist and things of that nature. But um, I remember coming across, and I, and I brought this book to, to share with everybody. This is one of my number one reads for people. I came across um, a book, Many Lives, Many Masters, by Dr. Brian Weiss. Um, it's right here off camera. Right here. Um, and this book really, you know, Dr. Brian Weiss was a Yale trained uh, psychiatrist. He had a thriving practice. Um, and he didn't really have any belief in God or, you know, connections or things of that nature. Um, he didn't have a belief in reincarnation. But he was a very dedicated psychiatrist and he was working with a patient who had this horrible phobia. And she couldn't overcome it. And Dr. Weiss had heard um, or had read an article about the use of hypnosis to help um, patients with trauma get to the root of it. And he thought, okay, I'm willing to try this for my patient. And it was back in the day of the tape recorder. I think this book was published almost 40 years ago. And so he recorded the session and he regressed her. And really what that is, hypnosis is just really deep meditation. And he told her to go back to the root of the trauma. And he expected her to maybe have a memory and maybe from when she was two or three years old before we really acquire language. But instead she started describing um, a lifetime hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And the way she died in that lifetime was the phobia she had this lifetime. She started coming out of the hypnosis, he started bringing her out of the hypnosis, and he's thinking, this is a little this is a little odd, but okay, maybe this is her mind's way of healing. And as she started to come out of the hypnosis, she started talking about being in the in-between. And she said, I have your master guides here, which is what I call spirit guides, right? And he thought, hmm, okay. And she <laughs> shared this really beautiful message from his master guide saying that he was going to be here and heal the world and do all this stuff. And he thought, you know, he's still, okay. And, you know, he's bringing her out of the hypnosis more. And uh, she said, well, now I have your father here. And she named his father who had crossed years before and gave this beautiful healing message from his father. And now he's thinking, how could she possibly know my father's name? You know, this is 40 years ago, too. You can't even accuse her of, like, trying to Google him beforehand. You know, like, <laughs> that didn't exist. And he thought, okay, that's a beautiful message. And then, as he was bringing her out more, she said, but wait, I have your infant son here. And named his infant son and gave the most beautiful message about, you know, that child just needing to be loved by him and that connection. Um, and nobody knew that Dr. Weiss had had a little boy who died of SIDS at, I think, two weeks old. And so she came out of this, you know, regression, this hypnosis, healed of her phobia completely, spontaneously. That was it. She never had the phobia again. And he came out of this a changed man because now his entire paradigm of belief had been rocked. And he used regression therapy on other patients and found that they all had past life recall and that was healing them. 
and he had this, I think, dark net of the soul, right? What, did, what does he do with his information? And when we talk about careers versus calling, this is a really powerful thing because his career was a psychiatrist and he wanted to remain in that career too, but his calling was to share this truth with the world. And he struggled with it for a while, but then he finally did publish Many Lives, Many Masters. You know, I think he was probably worried that he wouldn't be respected in the scientific community or he'd be labeled a quack or he'd be laughed out of business. That's not what happened at all. And so he's this great healer in the world who is still a practicing psychiatrist but who has embraced and helped people see that there is so much more to our existence and what we think we know than, you know, than we've really explored. Um, I had the privilege of meeting him too. I did a discussion panel with him at a book fair in Miami years ago, and he just being in his presence is so beautiful. He's he's just an extraordinary being. But what I've come to understand, you know, through through that book and through my understanding and through my own experiences, is that yeah, we actually were here together. You know, a lot of times we come back together in kind of soul groups. You know, have you ever met somebody and you're just meeting them for the first time, but you know them? It's just like a click and you know your soul knows their soul, but there's no logical way to explain it. Or sometimes you meet somebody and you have a little bit of allergic reaction to them and you're not sure why. Well, maybe that's, you know, another kind of experience you had in a previous life with them. But, I mean, that's just a really fascinating topic to explore. And, and I encourage everybody to go out there and read about it. You know, don't, don't just accept what I'm saying. Go explore it for yourself. You know, there are some really great books out there too and there is some wonderful like research being done like the University of Virginia has a research center uh, Jim Tucker's doing uh, you know uh, research on children's past life recall so you know look at, like, people can look into this, this is beautiful mm. but what does that mean for our time right now and what does that mean for our connections right now and what does that mean about our world right now these are all really interesting questions to think about in the context of we're all here learning a collective lesson in love together. So if we let love be what guides us and we use that as almost the answer key to apply to how to make sense in our world right now, mm. the answer becomes easy on an individual level too. What we need to be doing is to just stay open to receiving other people's love or to giving love to others in whatever small or large way mm. we can do that. And I think it's also about choosing a path of love over fear. I mean, fear can be really debilitating and certainly right now people have very real physical feel, fears. They have financial fears. Uh, they have fear of, I think one of the things that goes on, you know, collectively in the world as a whole is like this concept of power, what true power is. You know, true power to me, what I've learned from the other side is helping one another rise in our own beings and our own light become better version of ourselves and helping each other that's what makes us really powerful not having more money than someone or the ability to to get something or make other people work for you or have a bigger house or anything like that you know true power is helping one another rise and i think some fear-based thinking is afraid of losing power or handing power over a perceived power, you know, this kind of power over others mm -hmm. versus helping others rise. And so I think that's a great part of the lesson we're here to learn about love and connection and all of that. And I do think 2020 is calling that to the carpet. You know, before uh, each year, every New Year's Eve, I'm usually asked by some, you know, news Thing to, to come online and give predictions and I I never want to dishonor my gift like that I really don't to me that's like not what I'm meant to do but mm -hmm. I always tune in myself anyway and I was like okay here's what's going to be going on in the world and I remember this year when I tuned in I was like wanted to slam the door on that because the message I got from the other side that was that this year 2020 was going to be a year of reckoning that was really the word I wanted to use and what they shared with me was that our world was out of balance that we were out of balance with one another we're spiritual beings. We're sent here to love and be loved. We've forgotten that lesson in a lot of ways. You know, uh, we are spirits in a physical body on this earth, and we need to honor those connections with all living things. We've lost sight of that as well. So the way the other side showed it to me is that everything that's going to be out of balance is going to be shown to be out of balance to the point where we will have no choice but to own that, take responsibility for that, and then change how we are living in every way. I think it was beyond just our, our health and well-being, but we're, we're seeing it around the world in, in the relationships between uh, you know each other, the, the race relationships. I mean. I mean, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement, I mean, there, there, there is so much being brought to the surface for us to really observe it in its truth. And, uh, and with that does also come opportunity, right? I mean, because it's not just about 
observing and viewing what is out of balance, but it's an invitation to move and move towards more balance, that the balance that we want to see being that change we want to bring to the world. I think it's an opportunity. And you brought up fear versus love. And, and I think for many people, the origin, uh, one origin of, of fear is separation and feeling like um, that I'm, I'm, you know, I, I am isolated. I'm alone. I'm, I'm in this by myself. And, and I think that could certainly bring up that, that experience of fear. And that's what I love about your message is that as you continue to share the, uh, the, the, the knowledge, the knowingness, I should say, that you are downloading and you're experiencing in every interaction, you are communicating such an important message right now. Well, it's always been an important message, but definitely now that we have to remember that we can start to extinguish that fear when we recognize just how, how much we are not alone and how much we are supported and connected. So I want to touch on another hot button topic when it, that's, that's usually associated with fear and, um, and it's very topical and relevant and, and that's something as, as what, what you might say as basic as wearing a mask. Um, and uh, you know, and some people think, well, if I wear a mask, I'm in my fear. And some might say that wearing a mask, you're in a state of love. Can you just, can you talk to that? I know it's very controversial in many, in many regions of the world, but how would you respond to people who are asking about that, that topic? To wear a mask or not to wear a mask? And how that it, is the question. And how it fits into the and love, is, fear, what that, continuum. Yeah, what, is that, what does that mean? You know, I think we're going through some really difficult waters politically uh, in, our, in, in a global sense, really, right now. But certainly mm -hmm. in America, where, um, you know, simple things have been politicized. Um, you know, number one, I always download and trust it you know whenever I get my downloads and it's not when I choose it it's not like I sit down and say okay other side give me my download it's like I'm doing laundry and I'm getting a download or you know <laughs> I'm like stepping into another room and the download comes that, that's just how it happens for me when I get these downloads it's as if I've had like you know four-hour conversations with the universe and my guides and my team of light on the other side that happen in a millisecond and I would love for everybody listening today to pay attention to your downloads too because it's a knowing and it happens. It's not exclusive to me. You don't have to be a psychic medium out in the world to get downloads. We are all connected. We are all getting downloads. It's just that a lot of us, we don't pay attention to it or we ignore it or we try to think more logically, right? So one of the downloads that I got when I was getting, you know, what's 2020 going to be like? And of course I did disclose this to my family. I'm like, put on your seatbelt. This is going to be rough. And at that time too, um, you know, coronavirus was going on in China. And I was tuned in whenever there was an illness, like when there was swine flu, when there was avian bird flu, I was tuned in and I'm like, okay, good. It's not going to affect us. This one, I was like, oh, this is going to affect us. Uh, I definitely didn't know to this extent. But I just saw, like, yep, this is going to come here. This will be here. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that download happened. But the other thing I want to say is they also told me, like, there's a responsibility we all have to embrace the truth. And one of the things that we struggle with a lot are false narratives. You know, I spent 20 years in an English classroom, and one of the things that we used to explore, especially when we looked at rhetoric, is how do you look at someone's argument, you know, something they say, and think critically about it. How do you explore that? Because if we just went around listening to other people's opinions and what they say is the truth, we'd fall hook, line, and sinker for everything, right? That's not a good way to walk around the world. So it's really important to be a critical thinker. And a critical thinker takes in a lot of different statements. They feel things. They understand things. They explore a question, and then they come to a conclusion. So, you know, wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. What does that mean? So I always turn to the other side. And before um, the U.S. government was ever, you know, the scientists were ever saying wear a mask, they were actually saying you don't need to wear a mask. I remember watching a video of a doctor and saying, you know, as long as you wear gloves, you're fine. And, wa you know, wash your hands a lot, you're fine. You don't need a mask. And I was like, that's not what I'm getting. And I'd actually told some of my clients who wanted to go for walks and things, I was like, that's fine, just wear a mask. And I wasn't, you know, feeling like you had to wear the N whatever, and like just a mask because it felt airborne to me. I remember my guide showed me really early on when this was just coming into the news. Sometimes they highlight things off a page for me, like it jumps out at me. And there was an article about a choir that I think was in um, Washington State. And they had all been very careful. This was at the very beginning of, the, of COVID, like very early March or the end of February. Um, and they had all worn gloves and been careful, and all they did was sing together. And pretty much they all got sick, and a, a lot of them, very sadly,
across to the other side. And my guides highlighted it for me. They said, everything that you need to know about this virus is in this article. This is airborne. It is, you know, through. And so what I learned very on and what, early on and what they showed me is that wearing a mask is key to fighting this infection. You know, and now it's become, too, when you do that, what's really interesting about wearing a mask, and I know, again, this is controversial, so I'm just sharing what I've gotten from the other side and what they've shown me, is that it's not even when you wear your mask, it's not to protect you. It's to protect the other person. If you wear a mask and the other person doesn't, you've only lowered your risk 30%. But if somebody else is wearing a mask and you're not, you're, you're, you've lowered, they've lowered the risk 70% for you. So it's kind of fascinating. I would like to say that Rob and I have been symptom free, temperature normal. We've been like isolating by ourselves in order to have this conversation today without masks. Sure. And we are also distanced. We are. <laughs> but um, whenever I leave the house in any way, I do wear a mask. Um, I think it's really, really important. I think it's important for everybody watching. Don't even accept what I'm saying. Go explore it. Go research it. See what downloads you get. Um, I'm sharing what the other side has told me, which is wearing a mask is key. And I actually really feel we could have prevented what's happening specifically in the U.S. Mm -hmm. to such a we could have lessened it so much if there had been a statement that said this is a true scientific fact it's n wearing a mask is not going to make you sick it's going to help prevent the spread of this mm -hmm. you know i think we, it's become such a contentious thing where so many people have said like oh is this even real but you know i think almost everyone's being touched by now knowing somebody who's crossed because of it seeing the impact of somebody so ill it is a very real thing personally i can attest to like what this is like i know people i've seen like this is a very real real illness mm -hmm. and it is very frightening in that sense but i think it's really important to focus on the love and not just the fear um to focus on our community and our connection to one another and what we can do for one another and how we can help one mm -hmm. another how we can be there for one another you know i think it's just so important i know in my own community that i live in right away they started food drives they you know the people who had mm -hmm. more were helping the people who had yeah. less and that's beautiful you know when you expand from here too in the sense that the other side said 2020 is a year of reckoning. I think it's really important energetically for us to all own the truth of our world, mm -hmm. of how things are created, of suffering, to acknowledge suffering that's taken place. I think it's really important to listen to one another's voices. You know, if one of my children comes to me and says, my knee hurts so bad, and I look at it and I don't see anything, what kind of mother would I be if I was like, your knee is fine, I don't see anything, and ignored them? We have to listen to one another. And if somebody or a group of people is coming and saying, we are in trauma, this is what we're experiencing, we are hurting and we need help, we need to listen. You know, it's so easy to counter or ignore or have something called will for ignorance, right? Will for ignorance is like, you know, but you're going to just choose a different narrative for yourself or a mm -hmm. different truth. You know, and I think it's really important for... America to own our truths collectively, to heal, to be loving. Mm. I think that's true in families. That's true everywhere is honor the truth, honor each other. What about the balance between recognizing what's, be, what's showing up in our environment, not, not willfully ignoring, but also what is the role of recognizing, acknowledging, being a support, being love, being that, that force of change in, in the world? but also being very mindful of your attention and where do you place your attention. Yes. I mean, I, I know in times like these, and not that we ever have had, had times like these, but times where there is a trauma or a crisis, it's very easy for us as human beings to really focus exclusively on suffering, on challenge. And, um, and I know you and I both are, are like-minded when it comes to the idea of energy flow and where, where our attention goes, energy flows. And is there a balance that we need to strike between not being willfully ignorant, but also being uh, mindful of our attention and where we're placing it? I mean, the example, of course, is people who are glued to the evening news, mm -hmm. which can be a little bit slanted towards, mm -hmm. you know, catastrophe. And, and then, I mean, I don't know if any, who, who's, anyone here has seen John Krasinski's uh, Good News Network online. It. Oh, it's beautiful. John Krasinski, the actor, did, you know, he, he did it for a while, weeks of where he just showed evidence of, of humanity 
and yeah. giving throughout the world. And he wanted a, a place for people to have a diversion where they can not divert away from what's happening in the world, but but focus their attention on what the, the essential workers and what people are doing for each other in this time frame. So can you speak to that, the idea of where we place our attention and this I issue yeah, of ignorance. I think that's such an important point you bring up, bring up. And first of all, I'll have to check that out. I'm sure it's like available that I can oh, YouTube. online. Oh, you Go for but it. I've always <laughs> felt like in addition to the evening news, we should have a station that's just good news. And it tells like heartwarming, beautiful stories well, that's that what this taking was. place in the world. Because <laughs> that's the reality of our, and the truth of our existence every day is that we are loving. We are connected. And there is so much good in the world. And that in times of crisis, we come together, you know, and that's what we need to focus on. It's like when Fred Rogers said when I was a little boy and I'd be overwhelmed by, you know, the dark, horrible things that were happening in the world, his mom would tell him, look to the helpers, watch the helpers. And I think that's what we need to do here too because when we hold on to that cord of light, to that love, to that connection, to our sense of community, to helping one another, to being loving, it pulls us through the rest. You know, it will yeah. help us get through that. There are some very small practices we can each do in our daily lives, though, to kind of reconnect to our higher soul self, and I think that's really important, too. You know, it's, it's getting in touch with our inner light and our inner being. You know, there are some really quick, kind of almost like meditations people can do. You know, one that I, I talk about a lot is white lighting ourselves. You know, one of the things that's true about our existence is we're always absorbing energy. You know, sometimes you'll meet somebody and their energy is stuck to you. It's almost like, it, you know, kind of mud splashed up on you, right? And we don't think to clear it off. Or, you know, sometimes you meet somebody and you just want to be around them more because their energy is so pure and beautiful. Like, just becoming aware of our own energy can help us navigate the world, you know. And I always say... Um, when we talk about energy, the way to start to feel your energy is to kind of make your hands into like this, like a C and a backward C and, and kind of pulse it back and forth a little bit because what you'll start to feel is almost like this boingy feeling or like a taffy feeling and you can play around with this, you know, um, and, and try and feel it. That's your energy field. That's your aura. And it, we have to be very mindful and careful about what we let in our aura. So if we're watching, you know, chaos, doom, and gloom, and we get into that fear-based mindset, we pull our energy very low, and we can get very panicky and maybe not see what our highest path is. So if we can kind of clear our energy, reconnect with our team of light, understand that we are part of something far greater than we can ever fathom, and trust that, it can really transform us. So one activity I like to do is white lighting. Um, and you can do this at home too. And you can get so good at this, you'll do it with your eyes open. It'll take 10 seconds. But I always tell everybody to you know, close your eyes and breathe in really deeply through your nose and out through your mouth three times. And when you do that, you can either leave your eyes open or close them, but picture like a beautiful sparkling white lake of light energy beautiful white energy and allow it to come down over your head, over your shoulders and down into the ground. And you'll actually feel a difference as you do that. That's creating this almost beautiful energy field around your own order and honoring your light energy. It's almost like, you know, sometimes when I'm driving and there's a horrible, horrible rainstorm out, it can be so overwhelming when you're driving and your windshield wipers are going like this and they're still not getting it. And then I'll pass under a tunnel, like an overpass. And There'll be no rain for a moment and just quiet. And then you're back out in the rain. <laughs> but it reminds us, like, there's always that inner peace. There's always it there. You just have to know it's there and kind of tuck back into it. And then there are things that we can do in our own lives that can bring us joy. And it's so important to make time and space for that. Number one, music shifts energy. So whatever music you're drawn to, make time to listen to music. It will shift you. It will transform you. It, it is just phenomenal. Um, reading books opens doors and explore, you know, helps us explore worlds beyond our own, whether it's nonfiction or fiction. Um, calling somebody, just calling them and saying, I'm thinking about you, makes a difference. And also taking a moment to have gratitude and think about maybe one person on your path who helped you rise into who you became. It's going to make you realize that connection's always there and you can feel it. So there are such simple activities we can do to kind of redirect our own energy and be mindful of the beauty around us and the blessings that are around us at all times. I'm, I'm smiling, Laura, because, um, you know, when you started talking about um, exercises that you could do, and the first thing you did was you said you put your hands here and kind of almost like taffy, you kind of experience... Um, 
you know, the, the, the feeling of energy. Um, you know, my world um, is, uh, has been greatly enhanced and expanded uh, by the practice of reconnected healing. Yeah, can you tell us and a little bit about I, that? I can. And I'm, and I'm, I always love learning about new ideas and new things, and I got is, to see a little bit about that. I find it fascinating. Yeah, you know, but what I'm, I'm, I'm laughing because uh, when, uh, as an associate instructor of reconnected healing, I, I, I have the opportunity, uh, you know, each year to, to bring people into their awareness of how they can connect very deeply with the energy that exists in the atmosphere around them and, and that pulses through them. And one of the very first things that we talk about doing is hold your hands in front of you. Really? And, 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 See, it's, and, it's, it's a download. I, they it's taught me just, that. And that's exactly what we do. It's like, Stretch your hands and see if you imagine a rubber band attached to the, the centers of your yeah, palm, it's like and just feel the stretch, and then come back and feel it I again. I hope you're doing this at home. Experience this. And and it's just so amazing that I know that you have not done formal training in reconnective healing, but that is how we begin to introduce people yeah, to it. Nor but, did I even know that. But it's really about energy. Exactly. It's the yeah. synchronicity of, of that was just beautiful. But I mean, in short, reconnective healing is a dynamic approach to coming back into a state of balance and harmony using our innate connections to one another. This field that is comprised of energy, light, and information. It's a field of consciousness, yes. right? And, uh, and we have access to the, these frequencies. Um, they're always reaching for us. It's similar to the way you describe, you know, from, you know, uh, those on the other side, our spirit guides, and, that they're, they're waiting to be received. They're reaching mm -hmm. to us. And in Reconnective Healing, we talk about the concept of being in your receivership. And recognizing that when we step into that interaction and we begin to notice and observe our profound connections, not only to one another, but the connections to what I would consider the essence of who we are, that which you talk about as well, that we, we exist outside and beyond our physical body. And, um, and you know, what, what drew me to Reconnective Healing was just this very elegantly simple concept that when we allow ourselves to bring our attention to that perfection, that inner essence, and we reconnect to that, and that becomes the point of our attention, we can introduce more balance and harmony into our now experience. And I, and I've, you know, I, I joke sometimes about, it's not a joke, but I, I joked with you earlier, actually, that I often use the concept of psychic mediums because when you talk to a psychic medium, they tell you that when they're communicating with a soul that is no longer in physical form, often the message that you get tra that becomes transferred to you is a message that somebody is in, they're, they're now in a state of pure love. Mm -hmm. They're in a state That's of pure true. harmony yeah. and, and they have shed all of the challenges and the, and the types of uh, the, the restrictions that they had in their, in their physical life. And, but the truth is, that does still exist within us when we're in physical form, correct? That, that yeah. love, that, that harmony. And uh, so I was really drawn to reconnected healing as a practice because it honors that. It honors that when that becomes the focal point and we allow ourselves to receive it and to experience it, we become catalysts for transformation so those around us can experience it too. And from that comes more balance, more harmony, and uh, yeah, so. Um, yeah, I love exploring ideas. That's actually on my book list. So I was gonna recommend uh, a book about that too, so uh, I'll share that when I share my book list. Um, you know, other practices we can do in our day-to-day -day life to, to kind of redirect or refocus our energy, which is what we're talking about is energy, is, is calling on our team of light. You know, I do this daily, I really do. You know, it's changed how I live. Um, I certainly did it through, you know, throughout this whole COVID experience where, you know, my father's on the other side and I'll say, hey, I just want to know you're around and watching and that, you know, you're helping us and helping me be on my highest path. And, and I'll get it in extraordinary ways. I remember very early on, you know, um, here in New York, Governor Cuomo would do uh, daily briefings. And I remember talking to my dad and saying, all right, you know, I just, can you, can you show up? And uh, one of his signs for me is with Elvis. And with that, Governor Cuomo, like in real time, as I'm directing this to my dad and watching, Governor Cuomo says, okay, now we're going to watch like this little movie clip we've made. And there are people like talking about like New York Strong and wearing masks and, you know, we're going to get through this. And one of the, like the first thing that happens is a girl that has like an Elvis hat on. And then somebody else like references Elvis. And I was like, oh my goodness, it happens in real time. But to me, it's such a profound moment of connection when those things happen to know we're not alone. So I, what I really encourage everybody who's part of today, um, part of this community, is to 
ask your loved ones on the other side or your spirit guides or God energy. You can direct it however you want. Make it specific. Ask them for specific signs and messages so that you will know that you are not alone, that you are not forgotten by the universe, that nothing is an accident, that we are all loved, we are all watched over. I always say, you know, pick a, pick a song. Um, if you get the song, the lyrics, anything that counts, pick a number sequence because our entire universe is based on sacred geometry, so numbers matter. I am not a math person, but I do know <laughs> numbers matter. Um, pick a creature, but don't make it, you know, something easy. Don't make it, you know, I would say don't just make it like an elephant. Make it a purple elephant or make it a pink dolphin or make it, you know, uh, a green bird with a orange ring around its neck. However specific you make it, ask your loved ones to send you this from the other side. And a phrase, you know, love you more to the moon and back, whatever it might be. A phrase from your childhood, a phrase that you just thought of. Because this creates a dialogue and it'll help you expand your own energy and feel connected, like so much beyond uh, our own, what's seemingly like this physical little existence. Absolutely. You know, we're going to very uh, soon, maybe in the next few minutes, start to uh, include some of the questions. Yeah, this that, is my favorite part. So uh, that first people we discuss, are writing then in. we're, we're going to discuss it, everything that you guys wanted to ask. So it looks like we had a little bit of a, a video interruption, so hopefully we're back online right now. Okay, fantastic. I'm sorry if those for those who um, missed a, a segment, but... Um, but let me see. I, I do have... This will also be online for a good week. Yes. So anybody who missed the segment will be able yes. to reaccess it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Hopefully uh, that will be... Apologies. Uh, this happens a lot. When we, <laughs> <laughs> when we talk about spirit, usually electrical things go wonky. I don't know if you heard in the beginning, but there was feedback coming up with... They already told me it was going to happen. Um, you know, we get electrical little things going a little haywire or crazy. It just means that... Guess what? When you came today, all your loved ones came with you. So they're with us as well. And sometimes electrical things can go a little bit, you know, off. Absolutely. So I have a lot of questions, Laura, Great. here. I'm so um, excited. So, okay. So let's see. Where should we start? Um, let's see. Okay. K Moore. She says, how do you explain the positive feeling of someone's presence in your life? I have felt this since I divorced three years ago, that my future partner was with me all the time. So how do you, how do you explain those, uh, how do you explain, I guess she's asking about those knowing. signs. She's, she's asking about a knowing, right? A sense of something. You know, I think our souls know everything. And then we have these brains that are like little dunce caps that keep us from remembering our true home, which is on the other side, mm -hmm. which keeps you know, us from remembering all the souls we already know and all the ones that are going to come into our lives. But sometimes there's a little bit of almost like a bleed through of our, what our soul knows versus like, you know, this functioning body we have and the, the frontal lobe of our mind that's kind of like a dunce cap and keeps us from remembering. So what she's really describing there is her soul knowing this is coming. Mm -hmm. um, having the sense that this partner is coming and I don't mean to be tuning in but I'm going to tune a little and say like the choice she made to get out of the last relationship was a huge jump on her soul path being able to leave that and see that as a success and understand she learned all the lessons she didn't have to stay stuck in that anymore is what's opening the doorway for this beautiful new relationship and it's like looking down a long hallway and seeing someone in the distance and seeing them come close but you can't make out the features yet it's that kind of sense sensing the energy sensing that this is coming but not quite mm. logically being able to explain it you know there's some really interesting things that I've learned from being you know a research medium and working with scientists and one of them is the role like our brain plays versus our consciousness mm -hmm. and then the scientific community cannot even explain where consciousness comes from, what it is. To me, consciousness is your soul, right? Because when we leave our physical bodies, this is what everybody on the other side tells me, we never lose consciousness. Like, we're very much alive energetically, we just don't have these clunky, heavy bodies. Like, and we're not stuck being in one place at one time or only seeing in one direction. And so it's very liberating, right? So it's all about energy and sensing energy. But our brains, it seems like, act as a dunce cap. So one of the things then, if you've read my books, you know this, when they've done, when scientists have done EGs of my brain when I'm in normal talking mode, which I am right now, versus reading mode, whether it's psychic or mediumistic, my brain looks completely different. In normal talking mode, I look mainly like most people. You know, <laughs> and I stuff all the brainwave activity is in this frontal lobe, and it's measurable, right? And I look normal. But the minute I go into reading mode, 
this part shuts off, the brainwave activity in my frontal lobe silences, and really interesting parts of my brain start to light up. Parts that when people have done like, you know, like certain psychedelic drugs that tie them to spiritual experience, like ayahuasca, things of that nature light up. I'm not on any sort of anything, but my, those parts <laughs> of my brain light up. And scientists say I seem to know where the switch is to access the spiritual. But I will tell you in normal mode, when I'm just going through my day-to-day -day stuff and I'm in the frontal lobe, that part is mostly shut down. I'm not going to be able to access things as well as I can. And what it sounds like to me is that she is starting to access that spiritual part of herself mm -hmm. where she can feel something beautiful and wonderful coming. And so it's really great when that happens to acknowledge it, to honor yes. it, and to say to the universe, to say to your team of life, I am so full of gratitude that this person is going to be entering my life. I am so happy the universe is bringing me my ideal partner, and I welcome it with open arms. And then just wait for it. You know, that's the thing. There's always divine timing that is happening, mm -hmm. always divine timing that's going on. And sometimes when we're in what we perceive as our darkest times or our darkest past or we're struggling the most, that moment or that spot on our life journey is pivotal for unfolding and unlocking all to come. There have been so many readings I've done for people and the people have felt really lost. They say, I don't know what my purpose is right now in life uh, or I'm going through this really hard you know, situation with divorce or somebody I love who's ill and like I'm just feeling so lost and forgotten by the universe. And but when I tune in, it's the exact opposite. You're not lost. You're right where you're supposed mm. to be right now. You have to go through this to get to what's to come. That sometimes those things transform us and allow us to open our energy more and be more more loving and be more connected or allow new things to come in so it's I think trusting trusting that we are all more loved than we can ever imagine and more watched over and more cared about than we can even feel about mm -hmm. our own selves trusting in that and trusting in our path leads us to the greatest place I imagine that you mentioned purpose, and I imagine that many people coming to you probably ask you that question. Like, how? I don't really let people ask. I'm like, okay, I'm opening whatever they say is going to say. Save questions to the end. So. Got it. <laughs> but it is the topic that comes up in what, what many if, meetings. What, it, what would you? How would you describe to someone how to tune into purpose? It's the things that light up your soul that you have to trust. Mm. You know, so many times you see people who. Their hobby brings them joy and it transforms into a career. You know, it's trusting that. It's what sparks you, what lights you up from the inside out. That will always be your highest path and you have to trust it. Perfect. You have to honor it. So I have a question here from Lauren Cohen, which I'm sure it's probably one of the number one questions on everyone's mind right now. She says, do you see, Laura, positive change coming after all these stressful things happening in the world? More peace and love, taking care of the environment better, more loving politicians. Are these things that, are you getting any downloads that we're heading in that direction? The answer is yes, absolutely yes. So here's the thing. When my guides showed me that we were entering a year of reckoning, it wasn't to punish anyone. It was to allow for beautiful, positive change to happen. You know, I'm wearing green today on purpose. So green for me, I, I have a lot of you know a language with the other side in colors. And green for me is all about growth, openness to new ideas, new energy coming through. And so I'm beaming this at all of you because we're all in this moment where we're going to be able to harness this energy into a beautiful new change. But we're all accountable, and all of us matter. And there is also collective, you know, energy that matters, thought energy that matters too. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys want to explore the idea of interconnection and how thought energy matters, there's a couple uh, books I would recommend. I'll just show you two. Um, one is The Intention Experiment by Lynn McTaggart and the other is The Power, the Power of Eight uh, <laughs> by Lynn McTaggart. This talks about how we are all interconnected and we all speak to one another through biophotons. This talks about thought energy and how we are greater in numbers when we put our thoughts and we direct our thoughts together and so Lynn researches this she's not like a, a woo woo person at all she you know this book is a hundred years of uh, experiments done by top universities you know about healing remote healing of all sorts of interesting things um, and this talks about our connection to one another there's another one um, becoming supernatural uh, which is a wonderful book to read. Uh, you can also dive into some of the books by Dean Radin. He's a uh, research scientist, and this book, Entangled Minds, is just one of the many he's written, which talks about our connections to one another, um, how there is a language that's going on energetically that transcends 
time and physical space where we can connect with one another through thought energy in a sense and we influence and affect one another's lives. And so what's really going on right now is we're not just affecting and influencing, let's say, our family members' lives. We're affecting and influencing each other's lives. So when they told me 2020 was going to be our year of reckoning, it wasn't this doom and gloom kind of prediction. It was more like, listen, I'm telling you this to prepare you. Everyone's going to go through a really dark tunnel right now, a really hard time, but it's for a purpose. It's not, the suffering is never the purpose. Suffering is something we collectively have to work through in order to get to the light, to get to the healing, to make better collective choices. Now here's the other thing I know, we're only as strong as our weakest link, and sometimes those of us who maybe, maybe like, we get it already, we don't need that lesson, we have to go through it the hard way because some people need to be shown this and learn the hard way. Mm -hmm. And I think that even the best of us were distanced from maybe even feeling gratitude for like when we pick up our groceries. <laughs> how many people's energy are behind that? Where was that grown? You know, how did this come into my being that I'm now physically taking into my being? Once you start becoming grateful and feeling connected to the world around you, it becomes contagious where you realize how interdependent we all are, how we matter to one another. And what you want for yourself, when you have a moment of wanting that for someone else, wanting them to rise, wanting them to be happy and secure, that's beautiful, and that's what we should all want for each other. You know, so I think we are in a time of transformation. I will tell you this, um, they showed me that things would happen in sequence, and it was about our connections with one another, our connections with the planet and living things which I mean if you think about this virus right and how it evolved and came out it's also being out of balance with our living environment with the creatures and you know how we are with one another in the world and, and what our companies are doing and our so many things involved right but we also have what we've been doing to our environment as a whole and what they did show me was that there is going to be a lot of um, hurricanes, tornadoes, in places you wouldn't think it, and I feel that's coming next, you know? You see all these memes, like, first it was this, then it's like, you know, I heard thunder outside, but it's probably Godzilla, because it's 2020, <laughs> you know? Um, but I do think that we still need to pay attention to our environment to heal fully, because I think there is a connection between how we're treating the earth and how this virus is spreading, mm. that we need to also balance it. But, so what I'm, I think I'm really trying to say here is what they have shown me is that this is leading us in a positive direction. And sometimes you have to go through a really, really dark time in order to get to that really beautiful transformative mm. moment. And sometimes we have to really roll up our sleeves and learn the hard way and really get into it and go deep within ourselves. You know, I, what word I love? Grit. Grit is like going deep, finding the courage, and rolling up your sleeves, and doing it anyway, and getting through it. That's what we all need right now, too. You know, one thing I want to make note of, too, is that I think a lot of us are very sensitive to the suffering that's going on in the world. And, you know, I, what I think is heartbreaking is to hear the stories of families who aren't able to be with their loved ones who are dying in, in hospitals of COVID. And I, I just want to say one thing that my guide has told me to share is that no one ever crosses alone ever. You know, we have our physical loved ones here, but we're always met by a team of light on the other side. You know, and I write about this in my book, too, of so many times, like, people recognizing, oh, my mom's here from the other side right before they cross. You know, my aunt spent years as a, a nurse, and she would tell me, she could always tell when a patient was going to cross, because the patient would talk about their parent being in the room, their grandparent being in the mm. room. You know, not anything that we could see, but then they would cross to the other side because nobody crosses alone. So for the people who are here and have lost a loved one are dealing with that great grief of that loss but also not being able to be present physically for that person, please know energetically you're in that we're in that person's heart. You were you were right there with them energetically, but also they were greeted by other people from the other side. You know and, and the other thing is too if we have pets, they're the first ones that come bounding <laughs> up to you when you cross. You know it's it's beautiful, so just to have that reassurance, too. I know I got a little off topic, but I'm listening no. to my guides telling me things at the same time as I'm I talking. I am not so. going to challenge your flow. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to go with it. Um, so you are a former educator. Well, you're still an educator, but you're a mm -hmm. former classroom teacher. Yeah. Let's say that. Um, I work in a school. I'm a school psychologist, 
And now we have a, a question from Maria Fazari asking about, as a teacher, thoughts on school and kids in September? Are you anything related to that? Okay, that's so again, when I get my downloads, I get them. And they usually come without any sort of agenda. Like, for an example, what I've, and I, I would share this with all of you at home too, when you get downloads from the other side, they should come without a feeling of positive or negative, right? So it's just kind of neutral. Mm -hmm. Like, here's information. And then you might react to it like, oh, that's upsetting, or oh, that's really great. But, you know, it's information. And so I got a download from the other side a good month ago and here's what they showed me they showed me that all schools fundamentally should instead of be on like four quarters be on trimesters and that we should switch to what's called like a type of block scheduling which mm -hmm. fundamentally means like longer you know like a, a longer period of time and then every other day or every day off what I am getting though is that remote learning for the first trimester would be best so let's say what I keep feeling is now through December, there is still this window of, um, I'm going to say like free will what's going to happen based on how we all act and react. If we all choose a highest path where we're concerned about each other, we're masking, we're being you know, mm -hmm. respectful of other people's energy, we're not having like parties of 50 people together and, and mm -hmm. so forth, this is going to end much sooner. But if we don't do that, it's going to take longer. You know, that said, you know, it's very uncomfortable, I think, for a lot of educators. It's, it's like the same way as uh, frontline workers who have been going in. Like, this is my calling. This is my job. I love these children. I love what I do. But I also want to protect them as well as myself. And so people that are really struggling with this. Ideally, I would love it if, you know, our educational system across the board said, for this amount of time, we're going to be doing remote learning, but we're going to be switching to this and transitioning to that, or we're putting up these precautions. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the problems is, is there's no one set voice that is saying, here's what we're going to do across the board. But right. it's like, you can choose that, you can choose that, you can choose that. But guess what? Let's not forget, we're all interconnected. So everybody's choices collectively matter. Um, so I can understand the anxiety that's going on right mm -hmm. now. You know, what I would say to each person is to go to your team of light, to take a moment to like breathe deep, connect, see what download you get personally for yourself, for your children. It's a very personal choice. Um, I do think that with safety precautions, we can avoid a lot of things. But mm -hmm. I mean, ideally, if I were writing it, I would say, okay, we're staying home and doing remote. Then we're going to slowly transition in on block yeah. scheduling every other day, smaller classrooms, this sort of thing. And then we can go back. You know, very hopefully, I got a long time ago that right around September 24th, I felt like there was going to be vaccine coming out. Um, that and was so, actually one of the, I'm seeing a couple of vaccine questions okay. here, too. So what they had told me a while ago is um, they, they told me that they, they highlighted a calendar. So right around September 24th, I saw like a, like a blast of light. Now, I always have to interpret what that means, but my sense of it was like, okay, here we go. We're coming together now, or there's like help, or there's hope. So to me, the way I was interpreting it is like, okay, there's a vaccine that's going to work out, but maybe it's in trials then. And then I saw it extend through kind of December, and then once we flip into 2021, I feel much better about everything. Mm -hmm. You know, on a personal note, I, people say like, did you know this was coming? Did you see this was coming? Well, yes and no, only to a certain degree. You know, I am having a physical existence right here, and I, my soul is learning plenty of lessons on my own, too, and I'm not allowed to cheat. I'm not allowed to have the answer key. I am not the mind of God. I can only share what my guides and my team of light share with me, right? And they only share with me what is on my highest path to know at the time. So they did give me, like, hints. I will say that. Um, what's really interesting is in, like, um, January, you know, my son, who's very connected to begin with he's like you know mom we're due for like a pandemic and i'm like what are you talking about <laughs> we're due for a pan or maybe it was like more like december you know he was saying this he's like you know it's been a hundred years and this is what's going to happen i said cancel cancel that thought no 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 <laughs> but you know i think he was kind of tuning in a little bit too Apparently. <laughs> my guides would give me like 10 day ahead of schedule information i pulled my kids out of school before the schools closed because I got my download, this is real, this is happening. I went shopping for like, you know, essential stuff to be done with it, 10 days before everybody else did, 10 days before we got any information because they would show me that. Yeah. But you know, it was not them telling me, here's how it's gonna be. And the really interesting thing too is, they have not told me, here is the exact timeline, it's set in stone of how long this illness is gonna be here. They have told me this, 
this is an opportunity for all of you to come together. If you view each other as a community and you're loving to each other and you stop the politics and you drop all the, the pretenses and you focus on healthy choices, good choices, loving choices, and the value of human life over mm. any other form of success and coming together to support each other, this will end a lot sooner. Mm. If you don't do that and you haven't learned the lesson and you're more focused on arguing with somebody whose political beliefs aren't yours or you know, making money for certain you know, factories or this or that, whatever that might be, this mm. is going to take longer. And we're all in this together. Yeah, it's funny. I was going to ask you the question because there were some questions about timeline. And, uh, and I imagine, uh, this is my uh, impression, and I would love for you to guide me one way or the other, but I imagine that there is no one timeline. And, uh, and I'm sure as psychics and mediums, those questions are, you, you get those questions a lot. You know, when is this going to happen? And uh, is it true from your understanding and your awareness that um, depending on the choices and the free will and the decisions that we're making, those timelines can shift. I mean, absolutely. So it's like this. This is what my guides have showed me to explain it. You know, when you go to the airport and they have those moving sidewalks, mm -hmm. you can get on it. And you're like, Vroom! and then if you don't get on it, you're walking slower, mm -hmm. right? It's this. It's the same amount of space, but a very different mm -hmm. timeline that happens. So yes, that's what we have before us right now. Are we going to resolve this and heal together sooner, or is it going to take longer? I also think we need to not just look at ourselves like inclusively as one country or any you know country looking, oh, this is my country, looking on a global way. This is inviting us to see ourselves as global citizens and see how we affect one another and want, want love for somebody half a world away, you want them to have a good quality of life, want them to be healthy, to wish them well. That's the beauty of all this, that when we get into that mindset and that energy, it becomes contagious. Do I think this is going to last on and on? Absolutely not. Do I think this is transforming everybody? Is it making everybody look at his or her own life, see the connections that are there, um, search for gratitude, search for meaning? Is it transforming careers and who we are? Absolutely yes. It is changing every, it has affected every single person on this planet in one way or another. What else, what else has ever done that? This is a moment of great change and transformation that can happen. But only if we choose to be loving, to trust one another, to be kind, to stop criticizing one another. Just focus on love and, and focus on other people's feelings too, not just your own. Like how does somebody else feel about this? I have to value their feelings. You know, I'm looking at a question here. This is, I guess, more of a personal question for you. Um, we have two beautiful books here. The first book, The Light Between Us, you have, you have accurately described it as your personal journey. It's your story. And in it, of course, is a rich understanding of how we fit into the, the greater whole of the universe. And then signs came out, and this was more of a manual for the rest of us. You know, <laughs> this is, and, and you state that, that this is really designed to help us understand our active role and opportunity to connect um, and, and, to, uh, and to step into our knowingness. So one of the questions is, is there a third book? And where would you go from, where okay, would you so go? Okay, so there is a third book. <laughs> so the really funny thing about my books is, you know, this one took me, you know, 30 something years to write or 40 something <laughs> years to write, right? It was coming through. The minute I hit the send button to my editor for this book, like hit my deadline, it's done sent, I got the download for signs. And I got really, I was exhausted, writing a book is exhausted. I was like, I said to my guides, you have to give me a year off. I cannot take this download right now. You have to give me a year off. I'll jot down some quick notes, but circle back in a year. And do you know they did? They gave me a full year off, and then I started getting my downloads for science. And then I said to them, I'm not going to write it right away. Give me nine more months. And I did it. So this was really interesting. I hit send on science, and there was nothing. And I'm like, this is amazing. I have some time off. And I want to say probably about... Four or five months ago, the next book started. I started getting my downloads. And I'm like, with everything going on in the world right now, I had so, so much I was juggling, so much I was doing, I thought, okay. So what I always do when I get my downloads is I put them in the notes section of my phone. And the interesting thing about The Light Between Us is I didn't get the title till two hours before I sent the book to my editor. Signs, that title came to me within the first, like, two weeks. The next book, the first thing that came was the title, which I'm not sharing yet. 
<laughs> but if I told you I the title, it would explain exclusive. everything because <laughs> it's a progression and I see what the other side is doing because a lot of times you keep saying your message, your message is not my message at all. It is the other side's message and I'm just so privileged and honored to be the vehicle that it comes out of. And so there is a progression of the next book which is really much more about honoring all of our own energy and how it interconnects to others and how to become the best versions of ourselves, how to nurture that, and how your life can transform when you put these ideas into practice, when you put into practice the fact that your energy matters, your connection to others here, you have your own soul group teams of light as well as strangers you're affecting, and when we call upon our teams of light on the other side and use that in daily practice, how can that transform our lives? Mm -hmm. And there's going to be anecdotes from people who have you know, shared with me how this has transformed their lives, and it's, it's magical. Yeah. You know, so it's really leading us into more of an understanding of that. So my, uh, my agent has been waiting for the outline very <laughs> patiently, and she, I, I said, okay, I'm going to sit down one night. Because the way that I, I do the books, too, it's I get this hyper-focus that happens. I kind of forget about my body, and I just like focus, and I download. And so the outline for, for these, like for signs, happened um, between 11 p.m. and 2 a.m. It was done. Wow. So um, three hours, whole book outlined. Wow. And I just channel it, right? So um, I just have to actually... Harness my energy, mm. sit down at the computer to channel that and get that out and get that going. What did you say that most creation is channeled? Oh, I'm so <laughs> glad you said that. Yeah, the other side has taught me that. No artist here ever works alone. And this is the beautiful thing. When you start surrendering and opening your mind and your heart to the fact that you are part of such a greater whole and you say to the universe, use me as a vehicle of love and healing in this world however I can best be used, magical things happen. Mm. And people might be shocked what downloads they get, what comes through them, what comes out of them, where they're led to. We all matter. It, we all are playing this great role in other people's lives we can't even imagine. Mm. So I even think now is this really powerful time, instead of giving into fear, give into love and open up and say, what am I meant to do? Show me. Mm. Give me the downloads. And it's really interesting because I use the word download, but every single person I talk to, whether it's an artist or a creator or a teacher or a nurse or anybody, they talk the same language they say I got this download <laughs> so it's it's almost like a computer downloading it's, yeah. it's a real thing and you get them every single person viewing this today who's part of this community you get them as well pay attention you know if, if you don't have a pen and paper to write it down you have a cell phone most people do put it in the notes section and mm. watch what happens also pay attention to your dreams the other side works with us a lot when we sleep. You know, our physical bodies, physically, the cells need rest, but I think we also connect spiritually to our true home. And mm -hmm. so we get a lot of information, and a lot of times we will have these very visual dreams that are very symbolic in nature and will guide us. Nobody talks about how odd that is that we're sleeping, our physical eyes are closed, and yet we're vividly seeing. So that's that kind of psychic vision that we have that... Mm -hmm. Some people call it their third eye, whatever that is, that awareness and that awakening. Yeah. That when we leave our physical bodies, we can see all over and at once. You know, we still have vision. This is limiting. I, I have a great question from Jade, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you her question and then just add to it because mm -hmm. it's related. Um, Jade says, can you ask the other side for a sign to be sent to a significant other or someone else? Could you actually ask your guides or your, your loved ones, your team of light, to please deliver a sign to someone else? hundred percent, yes. And it's really fun to test it like that and to do that. That's why I'm saying, like, test these things. Don't make it easy on them. They love a challenge. Um, last week, uh, my family and I went to the Adirondacks. I think I've written about it in one book. We go to Brant Lake. It's, I recharge there every year. It's mountains and it's lake and it's quiet and it's just beautiful energy. And when we arrived there, I said to my dad, hey, dad, just let me know you're here to send me a hummingbird. I wake up the next morning, um, and my mom had already woken up and had her morning coffee, and she said, you know, I came out here this morning, and I sat down quietly, and you're not going to believe what came right over to me out of nowhere, a hummingbird. And I was like, I am going to believe that. Now let me <laughs> tell you why. You know, it was really neat. The next day, she, my mom didn't tell me this. I was in, my, my youngest daughter and I got in our car, and um, in my car, we were going to go run an errand um, to get some food, to pick up groceries, to bring back to the house. And I kid you not, you can't make this stuff up. I sit in the, I close the door, and there is a beautiful blue dragonfly in the car right next to me. And my youngest daughter, Juliet, she's like, Mom, 
oh my gosh, look at that. And I'm like, this is so magical because that's one of my signs. So I open the door and let it out. We're driving. Two minutes later, she goes, mom, look at this. And on her door right there is a ladybug crawling. So we come back from the errand. I tell my mom, mom, this magical thing. It was like a magical car ride. We get in and there's, there's a dragonfly in my car and then a ladybug. And she starts getting a little teary. And she said, I just asked my mother today to send a ladybug to me. And she sends it to my daughter. And so it's like they Beautiful. sometimes choose that without even us asking. They give our signs to family members so that we start a conversation and we realize that circle of love and connection is, mm. is ever present. So I thought it was really neat. My dad sent my sign to my mom. My mom asked her mom for a sign. My grandmother sent it to my daughter. Right. Like we are so loved. We are so interconnected. And it's as simple as that. You can really ask for things and get it. Mm. You know what I love is like I have a discussion group on Facebook um, where you can join. And what I love about that community is everybody shares the signs that they're getting and the creative way that there's loved ones send it mm -hmm. and it is phenomenal to read because it might not be like the exact thing um but you get it like there's one that i recently read somebody posted like she asked um her loved one on the other side for a star and an armadillo together <laughs> Okay. And then she posted how she got it, and one was like a picture of Clint Eastwood, who's a star, holding an armadillo, <laughs> and the other one was like, it said like, it was like uh, from a store that was called like the Armadillo, and it had a picture of a star above it. So it was so creative and clever how they are. You will get them. There's a sense of humor on the other side. They definitely, <laughs> they love a good challenge. That's what I'm saying. Definitely say like, send this person that sign, send that person that yeah. sign. But then be prepared because they both put a twist. They might give it to you both. They might put it in a creative way. Yeah. But it's phenomenal to do that because yeah. what I love is like when you get your sign, you shouldn't just keep it to yourself. You're meant to share it. So tell the story. Mm. You know, and so many times, like, people have come up to me, especially before it, my book Signs came out, and they would be like, I have a story I've never told anybody, but I have to tell you. And then tell me this most amazing story of connection of a sign. Mm. And I'm like, you should be telling everyone this. But people feel like if I say this, people might laugh or think I'm crazy, but they don't. They say, oh, my God, that's amazing. I have to tell you about a story that happened to me. We all have these beautiful spiritual moments of connection. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about them as much as we should. So it's so yeah. important, too. It's, it's so interesting you say that because, um, you know, when I started traveling a lot um, with the Reconnection Organization and teaching Reconnective Healing, I would often I would get an Uber or a ride to an airport and um, and I'd, in, invariably I'd be asked, um, so what bring you what's what's bringing you to travel? And and I would start to talk about these concepts and you know and and I guess I always I guess this is just my preconditioning. I always expected that there was going to be resistance. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing like these Uber drivers start sharing their experiences. Yes. And they and they'll say that they'll say I've never shared this with somebody. And they talk about texts that they get from people who have passed. And they're yes. like, how am I getting a text? And right. and it's just amazing how and. We're not communicating about this topic enough. I think that we, we're... We're not, and there needs to be a forum for that. Yeah. We're, today we are, and <laughs> thank you for being part of this. But I would love yeah. for everybody to take this back and talk to their yeah. communities about it as well. It's so important. It's who we are as spiritual beings. So I wanted to expand on what Jade had asked you, what we just talked about, about asking um, our guides maybe to send a sign to someone else. Um, I'll get personal in that um, when my wife and I first started um, really opening up to the concepts of spirituality and the idea of guides, um, we really dove in head first. And one of the things that my wife used to always do um, is that uh, if one of our kids was going through a challenging time, she would often speak to our child's guides and say, could you please what make sure, idea. please make sure that, that you are with her today or please, is that, I mean, cause we talk a lot, you talk a lot about uh, talking to your own team, but, mm -hmm. but what, if, what about that idea of actually well, reaching idea. out to you know, a Every time I guides. read for somebody, I talk to their guides. Like when I start out psychically, I'm getting all the information from their guides and then I'll switch and the mediumship will come in. You know, for me, it's a very divided thing. Like, so it's to the, to the left for psychic information where I'm talking to their guides and then to the right for when the mediumship comes in. But I talk to people's guides all the time. So. I don't, you don't have to be a psychic medium to, to connect with somebody else's guides. Ask them. Ask them for help. Ask both your guides and those guides to watch over and help facilitate. You know, and you can just say, help them find their highest path. You don't have to be controlling. Be like, make sure that at 2 p.m. they're here. Just say, right. be with them. Help them find their highest path. So I love that concept and that understanding that we're all interconnected, but we all, all have this team of light. And we should all be asking, um, you know, the other side to help us all rise. Beautiful. Yeah. So um, 
Mahogany Gamble asks... Uh, oh, I love that name. It's a pretty name. Beautiful. Isn't it? um, so she asks, can you talk about dealing with the feeling of powerlessness or yeah. feeling like a victim? And she's especially relating it to Black Lives Matter and America's difficulty with race matters. Mm-hmm. Um, what, would, what could you add to that discussion? Well, I think the most powerless you can probably feel is that when you're trying to use your voice and you're not heard. Right? I mean, there's also physical powerlessness that can mm-hmm. go along with that. But when you come to someone and you say, I'm hurting, and they say, no, you're not, or, oh, well, or that's not my reality, so whatever that might be, no matter what that's about, that matters. You know, what I am very sensitive to is energy. And there is a truth that we need to embrace about how this nation came into being, how it was built, um, own that, take responsibility for that, acknowledge that in order to heal. Mm. And I think there's a lot of denial about that that's going on. What I can say is that one of the things my guides have always taught me is that if you're in a position where your voice can be heard, you have to be a voice for the voiceless. That is one of the most important reasons why we're here, is not to just focus on your own journey and your own path, but to be a voice for others whose voice is going unheard. And I think if we all take that into our beings, everything will start making a lot more sense. Change is coming. You know, Mm -hmm. things lead towards love and connection and um, communication. We go over speed bumps together. You know, and if you look through time and history, you can see it again and again, major painful speed bumps we go through. But after those speed bumps, we've transformed into a better way of being. And what we're seeing right now in 2020 is speed bumps all at once. <laughs> it's like, bah, 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 bah. it's on so many levels. And so if you think about it that way, the whole conversation of Black Lives Matters has to be brought to light. We have to talk about these things. And we can't say to one another, well, I don't want to hear it, or that's not my beliefs. So no, we need to communicate. We need to listen. We need to honor the truth that's there. We need to acknowledge other people's pain. I don't care on what level that ever comes out in life, but when somebody is suffering, we need to acknowledge that. Whether that's a physical suffering, whether it's a karmic suffering, whether it's a traumatic suffering, we should care about each other. We should care about each other's journeys because that's how we transform and grow. And the truth of the matter is, what other people are experiencing We're really part of that same journey. We're just different leaves on different branches of the same tree. And when we cross the other side, and guess what? We no longer have these physical things dividing us, but we're all consciousness. You know what you can do in a millisecond? You can download somebody else's entire life experience and consciousness. As if you lived it, boom, you have that knowledge and that understanding. So in that regard, any and everything that they suffered or found joyful or loving is now part of your being as well. We're all part of this collective whole, so we should all be invested in each other's journeys. And if you look at what the other side says and what, you know, Dr. Weiss's books say about reincarnation, you might just be coming back in a situation where what you did this lifetime will help that situation later on. Mm. We should all care about one another. And when somebody says they're hurting, we need to listen. We need to pay attention. We need to become better versions of ourselves. There, there was a question earlier. I can't find it right now. But there was a question about reincarnation. And, and the question asked if, if there's choice involved in reincarnation. Um, is, that, is that a choice that you've understood uh, that we could either opt in or opt out of that process, or is it just a natural cycle? I think our, our highest being always wants to opt in, right? Because you're not really, you're willing to, to take whatever you have to take for the collective good. Hmm. So it's very interesting because on earth, what the other side's made very clear to me is some people are here as teachers for others. And a lot of times when I first read for somebody, I'll see what I call like a core or it's kind of the blueprint for their soul, and I'll see, oh, this is why you're here. Oh, this is what you're meant to do. Oh, this is why you're born into this family. Like, it'll show me so much, and it all comes in colors, but we're all in it together, and so we're here on very different levels. But we always are invested in each other's journeys. So this is where the real work takes place. This is where the transformation can take place. If you're here, it's because you opted in. And, you know, the whole idea of karma and energy and what you do has to be accounted for is a very real thing. The other side is 
taught me that 100%. You know, I've read for people who um, had been murdered or on the other side because their life was taken from them in a horrible way. Mm -hmm. What they've told me time and time again is they don't want their loved ones here to worry about avenging their death or getting revenge because it matters on the other side. Like, nobody ever gets away with anything. So if you're living in a very loving way here, you're doing beautiful work in the world. If you're blindsided about some things or you're hurtful in some ways, you're going to be held accountable for that. And there is a balance, a reckoning, a giving back that needs to take place. So I think some people are here on a certain lower level. Some people here on a much higher level to help those people. Run. There's a whole totally mm. crazy economy and different levels that go on. The thing is you don't get your rule book when you come in. There's no rule book that says, guess what, you're a golden level eight you know you're going to be helping these three key souls who are on a level one and a level two your lifetime one's going to come in when you're 13 the other one's when you're 33 like good luck you'll do it it'll be fun. like you don't get that guidance sometimes i'll see that when i read for people and be like oh this you know that will become apparent to me because i'm reading energy streams and i'm seeing what's there in their timelines but we don't get to know that again the dunked caps we're not allowed to remember so we have to go in a very trusting way mm -hmm. but the highest path for us is to feel that connection to call on our team of light on the other side to understand that we're not physical beings we're mm -hmm. spiritual beings having a physical experience so we have a question from michael silver uh, regarding children during this time can he I, it looks like just a general question of uh perhaps what is uh a child born and experiencing this time frame. I mean, our, our childhood, we, we, we didn't have anything like this uh, when we were children, but there are millions of children on the planet right now that are going through this with us as adults. And uh, what could you speak to the, the role of being a child during this? Uh, can you talk about you know, I that? I think children offer us some of our greatest opportunities to love and grow. You know, and it's through our love for children that we see, you know, I don't want to say like the glimpse of God love, that universe love, like mm -hmm. we're taught love through that. And I think what we're meant to focus on is wanting to create a world for our children that is on their highest path, that honors our connection mm -hmm. to one another, to the earth, Beautiful. to what truly matters. I think the children that are there are meant to look at us as guides and what a beautiful opportunity for us to rise into our highest state of being to teach our children compassion, love, connectedness, all of those things. Because it's the journey that matters. So it seems like simultaneously children are here to remind us what our contribution will be to this planet because they, they remind us that there is a legacy that we as adults uh, are passing down. But then I'm also hearing from you, it's resonating with me, is that children are also there to remind us of who we want to be ourselves. Absolutely, and, and who we can and be. And who we can be. You know, there are so many times where people, you know, having a child transforms them. I mean, I can speak just from my own being. Becoming a mother changed me in profound ways. It's like this huge catalyst for growth for my soul. It also connected me to the other side. If you read my book, you know that when I had my first daughter, like that would not stop because where she came from, there was this connection always, you know, and I'm very aware of my daughter's soul and my soul being connected and on a certain journey together of what we're meant to understand and the lessons we're meant to teach each other. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the teacher in me looks at every child as my child in a sense. Like you don't need to physically be a mother or a father to to embrace children and to help children and to parent others. I mean, so many times we parent each other and we're loving to each other and that's what this is all about. It's about love. It's about connectedness. It's about mm -hmm. honoring our love for one another and becoming stronger and better versions of ourselves in order to create a better energy field for everyone here. Mm. Those are beautiful words, Laura. Um, I see another question. Uh, see where are there were a few great ones here um, some political questions <laughs> um, how so Emily Pan asks how do you stay in the essence of love we've been talking a lot about love uh, when moments of frustration or inequality arise like how how in the face of that are we are we staying in that essence yeah I think it's really important not to give in to hate you know it's very easy to flip into hating like what always disturbs me a little bit is when people say like 
oh, this person is so awful. I, I just wish they would die. Like, mm, no, like, don't ever, ever go into that mindset or that energy. I'm always of the, the hope that people can grow and shift and change and, and so forth. I think when you feel powerless, that's when you go into this deep well of maybe wanting to lash out or hate or do that. I will tell you this, violence, never the answer, never. Um, categorizing people, never the answer either. You know, I think right now, too, there's so much of, you know, with the Black Lives Matter movement and police brutality, that is a very real thing we need to look at. But there are so many, imagine this, you're like this person who decides, you know, he or she wants to become a police officer because you want to help people and protect people and you're one of the really good ones and you do these things and you're, you're not at all racist, but now you're being labeled a certain way and being misunderstood. You must feel like your voice isn't mattering either. I think we need to each look at each other as individuals, as different facets of this great whole and not just label everybody and label all sorts of people. I think we need to communicate more with one another because I think when we don't do that, that's where the hatred comes in. That's where mm -hmm. we start treating each other in ways that's not respectful. You know, how you treat another human being speaks much more about who you are than about who they are. And it's okay to be angry and feel rage because something is so unjust. But that's when we have to turn in, tune in, find a way to have voices heard in a powerful way that matters. And you know what? I really truly believe it's our artists who are going to help voices be heard. If you look at any uh, society throughout time and history that's ever transformed and grown and leaps and bounds, it's when the arts are embraced. So hmm. let's have let's look at what our artists are writing. Let's look at the books that are coming out, um, you know, the movies that are coming out, the artwork that's coming out, the speeches that are coming out. Let's harness people's energy collectively in a positive way and make voices heard in a myriad of ways, rather than giving in to kind of this very low level hate where we are either physically violent against somebody or we label somebody and are doing their soul a dishonor by just making assumptions mm -hmm. about them without finding out who they really are. It's wise, wise words and uh, you know I'm again there are several comments of a political nature um, but I'm gonna ask it in an apolitical way okay, okay? Um, because whether you support or don't support one leader or another, and, and listen, we have an international audience here, so mm -hmm. some people are from other countries right. um, who have experiences with, with their own leadership. So I guess instead of, I, I guess what I, what I want to translate the question here to you is when you are disenfranchised by your leader or you feel disenfranchised or you, you don't, you look at um, the leadership in any part of the world, in any time in history, and you don't seem to feel that that leadership is representing you or is guiding you in a way that uh, is conducive with your belief about where the world needs to be. Um, how could you coexist with that? How can you reconcile that? That um, that you're not feeling a resonance. You know, it's, a lot of people are who are who disagree with the leadership in their part of the world feel a sense of like why why is this how we're being led right now and, and what is, is there a purpose of of being in I guess it goes back to that sense of uh, powerlessness of you know this is how the we're the why being. of it the why of it right and yeah. it's actually a really easy answer the answer is that it's a collective lesson in love just because you're in a certain state of being or your soul is in a certain way that you can recognize something as maybe being out of alignment with honoring other people's light or humanity or soul or spirit not everybody gets that yet. And again, we're only as strong as our weakest link. And so roll up your sleeves and stay grounded in your own light. Please do not give in to hatred. Do not give in to violence. Do not mm -hmm. give in to wishing somebody dead. What you're really wishing for there is that there's resolution to a problem that's really upsetting you, right? Mm -hmm. We do need to nurture the positive. Now, I remember being in the 10th grade English classroom, and my favorite book, and my favorite book to teach is To Kill a Mockingbird. And a um, little bit of a spoiler alert, I'm going <laughs> to reference something in here. Um, Atticus Finch uh, shoots a rabid dog that's in the neighborhood. And, you know, his son wants to go over and look at it, and Jim wants to look at it. And, and Atticus says to Jim, 
don't you go near that dog. That dog is just just as dangerous dead as it is alive. You know, and babies do like. Ex but I always stop the the conversation there with my students, and I said, "Is it really talking about a dog here? What are we really talking about?" And and you know, there'd always be one or two students that said, "I don't think it's really about rabies or the dog. I think it's about something that's contagious and they are within us that we shouldn't poke at or we shouldn't look at." And I feel like that's going on in our world a little bit. You know, no one person is all good or all bad. We have choices. We're spiritual beings in physical bodies with free will. And we have to decide what true power is, what true success is, the role of love we want in our lives, how we want to treat one another. And I think a lot of times when people feel fearful and threatened, they want to hold on to perceived power at the expense of lowering somebody else or not listening to somebody else or so forth. But that's a journey and a lesson their soul needs to go through in order to understand it. We can't take someone else's soul test for them. We can't fix it for them. And so those people who are witnessing that and feeling like, what is going on in the world? Why all the suffering? Why, the, why is this? It's because we have to hold the light while everybody else is understanding it. You know, there are parts of us that I don't think should be poked at. You know, there is this really interesting experiment that was done in the 1960s where a school teacher divided the classroom of children into brown-eyed and blue-eyed children. And I'm sure you're familiar. Mm -hmm. And anybody at home can Google this and find it right away and watch it. It's fascinating. I used to show it to my students during the To Kill a Mockingbird unit. It wasn't based on anything to do with skin color or anything like that. It was right after Martin Luther King Jr. got shot. And she told day one, like I think it was all the brown-eyed kids that they were superior and they shouldn't play with the blue-eyed kids and the blue-eyed kids have no real right to talk to them and she watched the kids transform into bullies because now they thought they're better they've been told they're better they've been told these things and then the next day she flipped and said i made a mistake it's actually the blue-eyed kids that are superior and she had like them wear next and then we watched the blue-eyed kids like uh, abuse the brown-eyed kids there was one kid one kid in the classroom who was like i'm not doing this this is wrong and was crying in class because of the injustice of it but you know what? The way that we're programmed is if we're told certain things and we're not critical thinkers, we tend to fall for it or we tend to misperceive that as power. So I think that there are so many people feeling powerless right now, like their voice doesn't matter. But what I can promise you is that the other side has told me, not only does your voice matter, your thoughts matter, your very thoughts matter. Sometimes change is slower coming, but it's coming, and I can feel that change coming. Mm -hmm. We are going through a dark time collectively, but there is light at the other end, and mm -hmm. I can see it, and I can feel it. And I'm hoping that people who are part of today's program can tap into their inner light being. They'll feel it coming too. Mm -hmm. Great change, great transformation. Is there a price for that? Yes. There's great suffering, great darkness that's going on, but mm -hmm. this is not the end of it. You know, there are many battles, so to speak, to a war. You lose some, but mm. ultimately you come out of it. And as spiritual beings, we are gravitating towards love and connection, not away from it. Mm. You know, one concept that I came across that still resonates with me, it came from uh, the Abraham Hicks material. I'm sure you're familiar with Abraham teachings and, uh, and probably many people as well. And it was a statement that I heard that I want you to reflect on is that one person in alignment with their soul, with their with the essence of, of who they are, is more powerful than a million people out of alignment. Oh, and so, true. so I wanted to know from yeah. your understanding and your perspective, is there truth to that? Is there's not only truth, it's a, it's an absolute fact. That's about energy again, right? So mm -hmm. what the other side has shown me is we really only perceive about fifteen percent of the energy that's around us at all times. There are these cords of connection, these plans, these timelines, these roads, things that are gonna happen, things you put into motion by your thought energy and your statements and all this that are all set up to happen, but we're just seeing the right now. It's trusting in that. It's trusting in that connection we all have, that love we all have, that we're part of the journey together. Mm -hmm. It's understanding that we might have this really myopic vision right now, but there's something much greater unfolding, and it's having faith in that that matters. Mm -hmm. And our very thought energy matters with that. And it's an empowering concept to realize that even though if we're seeing thousands and hundreds of thousands of people that are that are representing um, a persona or behavior that doesn't resonate with who you feel we need to be, when we step into our truth and we allow ourselves to be the light that this world needs, there is great power to that, a great transformative power to Absolutely. that. Absolutely, and I also think that there are great light workers coming. 
They're already around us. They're already boots on the ground, but there mm. is somebody coming who is going to have this platform of connection and unity for all of humanity, not just for one country. Mm. Like We're headed in that direction of connection, no matter how it feels right now. That's beautiful. Um, so I saw a question regarding um, soul contracts. Can we, can we explore soul contracts? Let me see if I can read the exact question. Um, where was it? Here it is, from Liz Brunner. She says, can you talk about soul contracts that people have with one another and how sometimes they may need to end even if they are, in fact, soul contracts? Can you I speak to that? I love that question, yeah. So, so often when I read for people, I'll see timelines and I might see like uh, in their core or that maybe there's purple energy there. And what purple energy means to me is that there's a soul contract that they have with another soul. And that they're the more evolved soul, but that person's the less evolved soul. But their soul loved that other person's soul so much that they said, all right, this lifetime, I'll play this role in your life. And oftentimes it's either one or more parent or a romantic relationship who, let's say, is the purple or lower soul. I'll play this focal point of love in your life and that you can try to grow your soul against mine. Now what we can't control is that person's choices, their free will choices or so forth. And a lot of times there's a set amount of time, timeline I'll see it, let's say maybe it's like 20 years or maybe it's 7 years, that that lower level soul has to try and ace that lesson, complete that lesson. Now if we get to that timeline ending and that person hasn't learned that lesson, it's not going to do anybody any good to stay in it. So, you know, one thing that I notice, too, a lot of times with, let's say, relationships and divorce, I actually see some divorces, a lot of them actually, as great successes because the relationship played the exact role, created the exact challenges that were meant to be created, and then that contract is released. Sometimes people stay stuck in relationships and there's no growth. And then it's like, you know, two swimmers like almost drowning each other. So I think sometimes giving yourself permission and tuning in and understanding that there's a soul contract that finished or completed mm -hmm. and now you'd either have to resign or let go is a really pivotal moment on your path. So I think sometimes that things that look like failures, especially with regard to relationships are absolute successes mm. to walk away from. And is it your understanding that um, when we come into this existence with perhaps uh, some, some plan of, uh, to experience certain lessons and to, uh, and to have certain types of uh, growth experiences, that due to the free will aspect, we, we could even during our lifetime, we could change directions, we could choose our soul could choose other pathways Absolutely. to explore. Because yeah. I guess this goes, speaks to that whole question that people often ask about fate and right. are we destined just to well. play out? Right. You know, we come into this lifetime and, and we're supposed to have this experience and then that and, and that. But uh, there is also an aspect of that, that plan can change. There are people you are meant to meet. There are experiences you're meant to have. But how you react to those spirit experiences or people and the choices you make around those people or experiences, that's mm. your free will coming into play. You know, every time I've heard you speak, um, every time I've had the privilege of listening to you, whether it's uh, the written word or, or in person, um, it, the messages that you have received and that you have been communicating are very hopeful. They, they it's always hopeful. <laughs> it's For me, too. You know, when I'm going through my day-to-day -day life, some situations are very challenging. There can be something my family is going through, I'm going through. But the great gift for me is I'm always connected, right? And I'm always getting information from the other side about the lesson it's teaching. Or I might not know the exact why we need to go through it, but I'll understand that it's connected. I'll see it as like spread out to so many other people's journeys. And what I can promise you is like there is always hope. There is always light. It is always there for us to tap into. Things seem so exhausting and so ugly right now, right? But we're going through this great time of transformation together. And we have the power, each one of us, to choose that higher path, to transform the world around us. And every single person matters. Everybody's choices matter. Mm. Nobody's voice is silent. Everybody matters. And we it's our responsibility to raise other people up. Simple as that. So we have a very, uh, I think, an important philosophical question Ooh. about energy. Okay, I love okay. this. Okay, so, um, and I saw it earlier. There are so many amazing questions coming through. I, and so I, this is my me. favorite part. It's, 
and it's such it's leading to such a beautiful conversation. I think I love the the just the uh, synchronicity of it all. But um, so the question had to do uh, what I would consider the philosophical uh, question of is there negative energy and positive energy, or is there positive energy and then the absence of positive energy? Um, and I think, and I know this is debated widely in in, in spiritual conversation. People, you know, uh, you know, are, are trying to kind of grapple with: is there is is negative energy an actual thing, or or is or do we have again? I'm just restating: do we have um, you know love and light as 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 the as the nature of, of energy, and when that gets pinched off, or when that's when that's being kind of uh, reduced in some way that we have this negative experience. So what, what is your... I love this question. So, you know, I think our default is love and connectedness. I really do. And I think fear interferes with that. I always look at energy like a lake. You know, my guides give me visuals that make sense to me so that I can explain it. Um, and so what they've shown me is, you know, if you picture a lake, you know, the sun's hitting it, people are water skiing, having fun, like laughter, all that beautiful light sound, right? That's kind of the highest level. That's where we find love, gratitude, and forgiveness, our three highest ways of being. If you are ever confused, you don't know what path to take in your life, accept the path of love, forgiveness, and gratitude. You'll always be on your highest path, right? But then when you start going under the water in the lake, it starts to get a little darker and a little colder and a little darker and a little... And at the bottom, God only knows what's there, right? Muck <laughs> and like catfish and things like thrown down there, right? You don't want to be down there. You want to stay up here, right? But if we start getting to ideas of, does that person have more than me? I'm fearful of losing my power. What about me? If we get very self-centered and self-absorbed, if we cut ourselves off from our compassion and our empathy for others, if we think we know it all, we don't need to hear anybody else's opinion, we're stunting our own growth and we're sinking lower in that energy field. Mm. So is negative energy real? Absolutely. But you know what? It's not who we really are we default to the positive energy. Now, if you've ever gone to like the theater or seen a Disney movie, you know there's always heroes and villains, right? And we watch this play out in order as an audience to gain a better understanding of what truly matters in life, right? And I think some of that plays out here on Earth in the same way as we have all different people of different energy levels doing different things. Mm. But love, forgiveness, you know, uh, gratitude, that's our default. We just need to pop right back mm. up to that. I love your lake analogy. It's it really helpful for me because uh, it, it, where it resonates with me is this concept of on the surface, when we're at the highest elevation of our, our vibration, that we have access to uh, to our, our true nature, that where there's light and love. You think about the surface of a lake, you think of the sun is shining and hitting down on it, and you're basking in it. And uh, and as you move further and further away from that, that source. Yes. That we're, we're, and we're getting less and less um, access to it, or, or we're perceiving that we're, we're accessing it less, it gets harder and harder to experience and harder to relate to. And, and, and you think about getting into a darker and darker you know, space, you're, you're just no longer uh, able to, there's confusion, there's, there's disorientation. You think about being at the bottom of a lake. I can't see which can't way. Hear I can't hear like clearly. So it's it's to you know to me what resonates to me with that concept is that you have this this positive uh, source of energy and it's and the question is always how much are we allowing ourselves or giving ourselves the opportunity to experience it and to relate to it and the further and further we get away from it, we we start to function uh, at a level that. Can be certainly perceived as very negative and very, yeah. but it, but it's it seems that the lake concept to me gives me a nice continuum of, of of withdrawing from the light and from that source. And, so. and the thing is, we can always pop right back up to the surface. That's where we're meant to be. That's right. where there's air and we breathe. You know, it, it's as simple as that. We just have to right own that. It's all transmutable. Yeah, it's something, yeah. absolutely. Beautiful. Um, let's see. We've got more. Um, let's see. So here, uh, Denise Ferrara, I know Denise, she's asking, how do you balance being in the higher energy and remaining connected and compassionate to others that may not be experiencing that higher energy? How do you serve? I think that's honoring everyone's light. 
honoring everyone's soul and understanding if somebody's struggling with their own understanding or they're not seeing the clear picture to have compassion and trust that they're doing their best. Mm. I think intention's really important. Do I think people intend to harm one another? No, I think they let fear, anger, jealousy guide them and then they hurt one another. But I think our true intentions aren't to hurt one another. We have to be very mindful of certain feelings we experience. We have to not follow them down those paths. We have to identify that feeling I'm experiencing, but I don't want to do X, Y, and Z because of that, because that's not loving. So let me sit with that feeling and be uncomfortable and let me examine it. You know, one of the things I did as a high school English teacher is every year at the end of the year we would have reflection is what we called it, where the students would look back on what they had read during the year and reflect on what they had learned or how it had changed them. You know, and that was such a beautiful moment to read these re these student responses that if they hadn't sat down to do that, they probably wouldn't have been fully aware of, but how they had grown, how they had changed, how things have impacted them, how their thought process had changed, mm -hmm. how they felt about things. I think we all need to do that on our own. We need to sit down for a moment. We need to just reflect backwards on our timelines. We need to look at the experiences we've had and how those have shifted us, what that's taught us, and then examine what the meaning behind it was. Why were we given that? What did we learn about that? And then if we find there's trauma there, there's anger there, there's resentment, there's pain, work on ways to release that, which can even just be picturing releasing it out into the universe, you know, reflecting on that. The other thing I love to do to get back into your soul and your essence is to take a moment and just think of one person, you know, or two people in your life who you feel a soul connection to from the past, you know, whether they're here with you in the physical still or what they're on the other side, because you're going to recognize too, like that sense of connection and how that person's existence influenced who you became. Because the truth is, we all influence each other all the time. And so when we work really hard within ourselves to not go down the path of, love, of anger, bitterness, fear, but we choose love, forgiveness, gratitude, we're shifting our energy, but we're also affecting one another. <laughs> What's so funny is that the most current question that was sent to me is, what is your recommendation on how to raise your vibration? And here you are answering the question. Yeah, well, you know, there are some really interesting ways to, um, you know, I already mentioned music. Mm -hmm. I think art in any form. I think saying to the universe, too, like, I'm ready to explore. Send me books or send me shows or send me people who are going to lead me on my journey is great. You can do that because then you're you're ready you're open to have experiences you know simple things like aesthetics too can be wonderful like energy is real so having aesthetics around you that please you or you like that you know whether it's like a room that you like or things that you like are great for me personally i love crystals i brought this crystal here today um this is clear quartz crystal um this is going to sound woo woo but Here's what I really think. I think all things hold an energy. And the really interesting thing that I learned in like eighth grade or science is that like rocks and minerals, they have certain properties, right? And so there are certain rocks that will break the same way every time. It's called cleavage. The eighth, eighth grade boys thought that was hilarious. They were like, it's cleavage. Um, but I really feel like I feel the energy of all things. So when I walk in a room, it's like all these fingerprints coming at me. And I've found that when I create spaces that soothe me, or I really love the energy of, mm. it affects my being. And so in my home, I have crystals everywhere because I just like the aesthetic and I like how it feels. My mm. favorite is clear quartz. So that's why I brought this today too. I like to kind of beam this beautiful like healing energy. Clear quartz to me brings you into your own light energy. It clears everything out and it brings you like into your soul, into who you are. Um, for those of you who like crystals or are interested in learning about them too, I actually got this, um, there's this really wonderful program that's on Instagram every Friday. It's run by um, a, a girl, a woman named Madison. Her energy is infectious and I, I stumbled upon this on Instagram. She owns a crystal store in LA called Open Eye Crystals, but every Friday, at noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. my time, she goes live online and she has what she calls Crystal QVC, which is actually where I got this beautiful <laughs> crystal from. I ordered it. Um, but you can claim crystals and buy them from her, but she teaches you about different crystals and she shows you them. And some are just so beautiful. Like, it's just 
So interesting. So, you know, honestly, I love crystals. If, if you like crystals, get yourself some crystals and put them around you. See how that feels. Um, design a space energetically around you that you like. But more than anything, that's the external, the internal. Lead from kindness. Do something kind for someone else. No matter if it's like the tiniest little thing or a big thing, it will matter. So transform yourself inside and outside you know honor mm -hmm. the physical body eat healthfully get sleep properly mm -hmm. i'm a big person about reading and if you don't like reading books you can listen to audible or you can watch you know things on netflix like documentaries it's very mm -hmm. similar to reading a book just always be hungry for information that mm. will transform your energy like i think sometimes we get very limited in thinking we know who we are now but we're always growing changing and shifting mm. and exploring so when we start opening to that more we allow that to come into our lives more magical things can happen you know one of the things that i love too about doing an event like this is like i can feel everybody's energy it's like all this beautiful like uh, like light bubbles coming at me and it's just you know it's so fantastic and i would like everybody yet who's watching right now just open to that for a minute like don't try to look with your physical eyes or just try to feel the energy of everybody connected to and the community right now here it's so beautiful um yeah and and join communities that are like that like the one i'm talking about here open eye crystals she runs this and there's like the most beautiful commentary of of community it's not just mm -hmm. about it's like about kindness and connection Find communities. Find communities online where you can share um, like-minded things. Let's say you like a certain musician. Find a community online to discuss that or whatever it might be. Like Create beautiful spaces within yourself and exterior as well. Also, I always say be by water whenever possible because water gives off negative ions and that clears your energy. It's Google negative ions after this it's, <laughs> and put in the name Clint Ober, O-B-E-R, and grounding. Um, a documentary will come up. It's fascinating about how the Earth's surface gives off negative ions if you work barefoot. Mm. Um, it regulates your your um, sleep, it regulates mm -hmm. your digestion, it thins your blood so more oxygen gets to your organs. This is not what we're thinking. This has been scientifically researched for decades. Um, we should know more about this than we do. I don't know why it's not more publicized and it's free. So Google mm -hmm. that. Like, Explore ideas. Explore different things. And if you're interested in like shifting your own physical energy too, this is what I wanted to share too, was, was the book on um, reconnective healing, which is The Reconnection by Dr. Eric Pearl. And another um, energy worker I love is Donna Eden, um, and this book is Energy Medicine, and she talks a lot about meridian points, and if you just Google her, there's a, like a lot of free like exercises on YouTube. Her energy is so positive and infectious, you can't help but smile. So she works with a technique called tapping that taps into meridian points and releases energy in your body. So I always say, like, don't trust me, don't believe me, try it. Go try these things, explore your world. You know, open to the idea of that there's always information the universe wants to send you and wants to guide you to that will transform you, that will make your life more beautiful. Gravitate to the people, the leaders, the thought leaders, that you feel connected to. Listen to what they're saying. Join groups around that. It all matters. It's all energy. Laura, we're a few minutes after the hour. Can we uh, continue our conversation we can do a, bit a more little if bit? People more. need to leave. That's fine. I know this is going to be up for a little yeah, while. So too, the, but I'm happy to answer. So a few more the questions. link, the link that you use to join this conversation, uh, to join this gathering today, is still going to be available for at least a week. I think that is uh, our plan. So if you uh, tomorrow decide to uh, click on that link, it should take you right to the recording of this conversation. If you want to kind of just listen more closely and hear something again that really resonated with you, uh, that is an opportunity for you. So um, so we can definitely take a few more questions if you're up yes, to it. Yes, definitely. Okay. Um, so here's a question. Uh, we haven't talked about this concept, uh, manifestation. Uh, Sanders 304 says, can you talk about manifesting our best lives? Oh, this is so important. And I feel like <laughs> this is part of what that next book is going to touch upon, too. At least that's what they've shown me. So, you know, I used to not really believe in manifestation. I'm embarrassed to say this. You know, I'm very, like, skeptical, grounded. And, um, you know, a couple years ago, I was trying to be a... I have a wonderful friend, Gwen. You know, maybe she, I, 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 I love her. Yeah, you, she I, went to high school. I, I remember Gwen. So, my, yeah. yeah, so she's still, like, you know... <laughs> 
such a central part of my life. And I was trying to be a good friend at the time because she was, you know, going through something. She's like, come to this manifesting course with me. And I kind of did this, like, eye roll. She couldn't say it. I'm like, oh, my God, all right. I'll go to this manifesting class with you to be a good friend. And I remember we got there and... Um, and the teacher was like, okay, take these magazines and just cut out whatever words and phrases are pulling you. And I'm like, okay. So I started doing it and I started cutting out these really like almost like obnoxious phrases. Like one of the things I cut out said New York Times bestselling author. I remember cutting it out and like feeling so embarrassed as I'm cutting it. Like, oh my God, like how dare I even have this like <laughs> phrase cut out for myself. And then I was like, whatever. I cut it out and I cut out like different pictures and different phrases and different things. And I actually never made it to the next manifesting class because it was like <laughs> the next Wednesday and my son had a stomach virus. So like I had all this in an envelope, right? And then lo and behold, if you read The Light Between Us, you know how I got my download and I knew I was going to be writing this book and this all unfolded. And shortly after that, I stumbled upon this envelope um, after this kind of had all come out and occurred. And every single thing I had cut out and put in that envelope uh, had come about, had come into being. And I thought, oh, wow, I have to pay attention to this. So how do I pay attention? I open the other side and say, give me my downloads. And they taught me the process of manifesting. I've done workshops on it before too, but one of the most important parts of manifesting is what comes before the manifesting, which is the clearing of energy and the purging of false thoughts and beliefs that you don't even realize are spinning around you. So, I mean, this is really like a, you know, a really long conversation we need to have, but in short, what I know absolutely is that thoughts matter. And that's both exhilarating and terrifying because a lot of people reverse manifest in their own lives they might wake up and think like oh god i have so much to do today it's gonna be the worst day guess what energy stream you just locked into the worst day now like the whole like that's what's going to be what finds you because that's kind of the note or the vibration that you're on mm -hmm. so catching ourselves with that speaking over it is important now how does this relate to what's going on in the world right now we can take the mindset of, oh my gosh, this is like the darkest time. We're all, you know, doomed. This is horrible. And if we take that mindset, we're plugging into a very low level. Or we can say, this is really hard what we're going through right now. How can I be more loving and be more connected to others? How can I find my highest and best path and help show others that as well? Because that's going to transform your energy and it's going to help transform other people's energy. So there's just like a little form of manifesting mm. that we're doing right now. Everybody watching this is manifesting. You want to talk about what you just manifested, all of you who participated in this, you manifested the energy of this center to continue to do what it's doing. So you are all connected to this great stream of light and all that's to come from this. Mm -hmm. We just manifested a different future than what would have happened had we not done this. This is huge. Manifesting takes place in every moment. This isn't like from two to four on Thursdays you manifest with the universe. This is at all times you are in a state of manifesting. But the great thing about manifesting is the universe always dreams bigger than you can. So you can project a certain belief system and the universe is gonna give you something even better. It'd be like asking for a dollar bill and getting a hundred dollar bill. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like that concept. There's so many steps, so it's like the, the first of all, recognizing, the purging, the clearing, and then there's um, thinking it, um, there's seeing it, which is visualization, or in the case of like cutting things out, creating mm -hmm. a vision board, uh, writing it, but you have to write it to the universe as a letter as if it's already happened with gratitude. Mm. Thank you so much for bringing me this. You can't say, oh, I wish you would, or you'd be in a state of wishing, right? So gratitude, and then sharing it with two other people. Again, power in numbers, like sharing your vision, having them repeat it back to you. We're so excited the universe is gonna bring this. And then here's the hardest part, the pe part people get hung up on is surrendering it, releasing it. Because mm. then we try and micromanage, well, how is that gonna happen? Well, what do I need to do to make that? Nope. And you can't have a, you can ask for a certain timeline, but you have to trust the universe to have a divine one. So if we all right now manifest that this difficult period we're going through is going to transform us into more connected, more loving community, global community of souls, isn't that beautiful? Mm. It's actually taken no physical effort for us to do that. It's like an internal messaging that we're doing. And if you read those books by Lynn McTaggart, you're going to see there is evidence throughout history of top universities of how thought intentions collectively matter greatly. Mm. I know it sounds like magical thinking, but mm. it's been shown to be true. And isn't it true that this community, that we, we are a community today, we have come together uh, with, uh, with the intention of 
of sharing information and, and raising our vibration. But we manifested this conversation. When I say we, I'm not talking about you and I. I'm talking about this whole group collectively yes. with us. Yes. Because we didn't have a script for today. I don't we, know. <laughs> this I, don't. Is, <clears throat> I have my computer open so I can reference what's going on with all of you. And uh, and and it's so beautiful because and I can't wait to watch this back because uh, I'm being so I'm so present in the moment right now that uh, I, I imagine that when I watch this back, this I'm going to see that this is a perfectly this conversation was just woven together just uh, divinely and uh, and it's it's really so amazing to to know that we are in the process of manifestation and I, and the one thing that you didn't mention that I I think um, I think well you kind of did. Uh, the idea of stepping outside your comfort zone uh, and 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 what comes uh, to us in our lives when we allow ourselves to just extend beyond where we've extended before. And I'm going to use this as an example because Laurel and Jackson, you're not a big fan of online <laughs> presentations. <clears throat> as a matter of fact, I mean, how many have you done of these before? Not so many. So. Pretty much it, right? Exactly. And, uh, and I can tell you, this is my personal report to you and I'm sure the audience could, could acknowledge uh, this is a beautiful format for you in a time like this and not to say and I know that the reason why you prefer to be live with people is because it goes back to energy yeah. being a part of of an energetic space where you can kind of be in the presence of others but you mentioned it several times. You can feel I can this feel, audience yeah. here. I joked with Rob. I said the only way, like, you know, my guides have been nudging me and showing me I have to transform. Um, to, you know, I love doing workshops. I love teaching people how to tune into their intuition and how to tune into their loved ones on the other side and, and all, like, how to create better lives and higher paths and how to see the spiritual in the everyday life. But I love in person. And, you know, it's really funny. I think I shared this with you. Um about probably about nine months ago now, 10 months ago, I was just sitting at home and I got a total download from my guides and they said, okay, you know, you're still going to be doing your readings in the world, but more than anything, you're here as a teacher and you're going to be teaching this and you're going to be doing these workshops and it's going to be really wonderful, but it's for 2021. And I was like, well, again, no emotion. And um, I went to my husband, I'm like, guess what? This is great. My guide just told me like, what I want to do more than anything is be a teacher in the world. Like, I don't want to say to people, look what I can do. I want to go, look what you can do. Let me show you how to access this within mm -hmm. yourselves. And I thought like, okay, well, that's really weird that, you know, they told me nothing for 2020. And then I started like bargaining in my own mind. I was like, all right, well, I'll just do it. And at the time I had gotten all these beautiful invitations to do workshops in Spain and Italy and all around the world and like all different states in the United States. I was so excited. I wanted to do them all, but I kept getting like, nope, you're not allowed. Nope, not 2020. So I bargained and I was like, all right, I'll just do the ones in New York. It must be because I need to be home and I need to be present. And meanwhile, I had to cancel every single one from New York because I didn't listen, you know? Like, it's so funny how we get um, our downloads and how we try to ship things and how we respond to things we get. And so what I want to say is I'm really happy today to be in this format because I, my guides have been nudging me and telling me you need to create this. And, and I actually have a whole bunch of things in the works to create online workshops and do that and that information should be coming out in about a month or so I just have to yeah and there've been do some that. and there's been some questions about yeah. your workshops you know yes. are you going to consider doing some of these I online am not only considering I am actively <clears throat> being shown that I am meant to so that will be something new for me and I'm going to be doing you know a series of them um, and I would also, I also, they've shown me I'm going to be doing like a discussion series too. Mm. And if it's left to me, I'm going to do a book club as well because I love <laughs> reading books and talking about books. So we'll see. But information on that should be coming out in about mm. a month. And I, I always post it on my social media. If you're, you're a newsletter subscriber, we get it that way. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I love about online workshops is that for right now, we're connecting with people all over the globe. Sure. And, you know, there's no physical constraints. Usually, like with the workshops, they sell out, and then I feel terrible. I can't get to everybody, and people have to travel some from so far. And I feel like this is my guide saying, see, I told you so. Like, this is... This is the future. This is what needs to be happening. Yeah. And what a beautiful way for me to feel connected with everybody. Because it is like a thousand little points yeah. of light coming at me that I can feel and that I'm beaming back. And I think that is a connection that does matter. Mm. And whether or not, you know, I see you in person, our souls connect. Our energy knows one another now. Like, we're, we've been brought together for a reason, and I love that. Mm. And I'm a firm believer that 
there's been a thousand questions for you, and obviously we can't get to every question, but I am a firm believer that uh, the information that we collectively needed uh, is what arose today. Yeah, I always trust that. I trust that, you know, it's guided by the other side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But if it were up to me, I'd spend the next 14 hours doing questions because <laughs> I love this part more than anything, but we can do that next time, too. Or, Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on record on behalf of Rosemary, Rosemary, Alyssa, and I, the three uh, co-owners of this center. You have an open invitation to create your, uh, your programs oh, here at this space. You. We will make space for you anytime oh, you wish to broadcast you. in a, in a space that, that of like energy. And, uh, and clearly we are in a space of like energy, you and I, my partners and this space and everyone who, uh, who is, uh, you know, who has privileged us with the opportunity to collaborate with, uh, you know, with this center. Uh, we have been so blessed, uh, to have been, um, continually attracting, people like Laurel and Jackson, uh, people like Michael Zinn, and, and, and all the other people that have come through the doors of this space, uh, we really feel the momentum of, uh, of what we have created, and we're so honored that uh, I, I do have to, once again, pay incredible gratitude to you, Laura, for, for, um, for really uh, doing us an amazing service. No, you don't. We're all part of the same team of light, and I, I'm honored to be here. This is a gift for me to be part of this energy and part of this connection. Yes. It just thrills me. I just but love you, it so you much. reminded us that we need to be in our gratitude. So I'm I'm just floating in my gratitude. Yeah. Right so now, here's but. what I want to leave people with too. <clears throat> what I would love for everybody to do is to think of one person who's helped you rise and send send them thoughtful love. To think of some person that you know of who is maybe hurting and in need of love or healing in some way, and send them. I call it beaming. Beam them love um, or goodness and think of one thing that you're grateful for and then here's the hard one think of somebody or something or part something to forgive it might be something you need to sit, forgive yourself for it may need be somebody who maybe crossed you with your side that you didn't get to say i'm sorry to or i forgive you um, please know that anytime you direct your thoughts to them, they always hear you and forgiveness is always given. So if you can close with doing that and then one final positive thought intention for our world and for healing, um, that would be so beautiful. And you can do that in your own sacred space. You don't have to do it this second. You can take a moment after this and do that. But I want to just thank everybody who has been here um, for this. And some of you, are, it's very late at night right now. And others of you, it's still earlier in the day. But I just, I, it's such a gift and an honor to connect like this and to be part of this discussion and to be part of today. And thank you for all you have done and the energy you've given and how you've created an ongoing space for others in our spiritual community to have this center as a resource. Thank and thank you. you so much for being in conversation with me and sharing your thoughts with everyone. Absolutely. Thank you all for your time. I will let you know that we do plan on continuing with uh, more events in the month of August like this one. So, uh, so stay tuned. Um, we're going to continue with the spirit of this conversation in as many ways that we can. Um, uh, I hope that you all uh, experience continued peace and harmony in your lives. And uh, we're all in this together. We're connected in ways beyond we ever imagined, uh, that any of us have ever imagined. Uh, so I am in my gratitude uh, on behalf of Rosemary, Alyssa, and myself. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll hopefully see you again soon.